This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Oh, that damn audio, that damn audio. What's going on? Hey, look at that. There's Chloe in blue. Oh, 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 something, something. Thank you, Ashy Snow. Oh, there they are. Chloe isn't really that big, it's just the way the camera is over there. Oh, look at the eye right in between. Mary Lou sang happy birthday for you yesterday, Dan, but you didn't hear it. I don't know where Eugenie is because Mary Lou sang for her too. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Eugenie and Dan both have uh, the same birthday. So uh, you have to go listen to the end of yesterday's show and you, you can hear it. Although I'm sure you know what it sounds like. Chloe, that's fabric. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, well, this is our, our Sunday night show. It's not... Serial Killer Sunday or anything. But I, what I thought would be interesting is to go through the, uh, you know, the, remember the two documents that have come out so far in the Dylan Rounds, the original one and then that second one. So it'd be cool to read them in order. Uh, the one that came out back in 2022 where it talks about the guns and things like that. And it gives you the timeline. So for those who don't know much about that one, uh, we could we'll go over that. And then recently, the search warrants from Pennsylvania in the Brian Koberger case listed different items. So we could uh, take a look and see what they got from there. And then we'll do a cold case. And then what after that, I don't know. Who knows? No idea. All right. Oh, look at the... Man, she's just trying to rip that thing apart. Chloe, Chloe, slow down. <laughs> sure what she's doing there. sure if this is different than the, what's different <coughs> in these hey thanks Danielle and also thanks um, so I, I sent two notebooks to um, Angie and um, oh, what, so what's that sound out there And then uh, Danielle actually sent in the money to pay for the pay for them for both of them yesterday. It's pretty cool. So thank you. I was just going to send it anyways, but I appreciate it. <clears throat> mm. 
Yeah, great. It was Gracie and uh, Angie. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I mean, I didn't. I didn't finish because I was looking outside at something. I got my notebook and free heart strength. Yeah, Chloe needs some food. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Danielle, Kathy Friedmaker, and also Teresa Murray. Oh, that's pretty far away, Heather. Jeez. Man, thank God you live so far away from that Chewbacca? train derailment. Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. Chloe's dog food fund. I only live about 2,700 miles from it. Man, really close. If you lived a mile or so, I'd be like, hmm, that's interesting. But, you know, 20, that's... All right, let's, uh, I'm not, let me just check and see what the difference, I didn't really notice that why there was a difference here. Brenner court document. So there's this one. This one's five pages long. And the other one is Uh, maybe they're the same. Well, no, it's different. Okay, Brenner. Okay, this one. Uh, I don't know. I guess these could be the same. You're not really looking what I'm looking at, but thanks, Cali Gal three. Let's see. This is the James Bren uh, Brenner, and then the first Your one vodka? is also. James Brenner. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Oh, it seems like it's almost exactly the same. June 8th, honor about. Okay. Finally checked out your Jordy Ayers videos with Trana. Hey, thank you. Yeah, aren't those crazy? I modeled the entire bathroom out there. I mean, it looks almost exactly the same. It took me forever. I mean, months to do that. Notice how I had the TH sound in there, you guys. I'm really proud of myself. Chewbacca? I'm getting the thump, the thush. I finally checked out months. Aria's videos with Travis. Extraordinary <laughs> animations. Well done. Oh, well, thank you. Good evening, and hope your weekend has been lovely. Yep, yep. I mean, when you say lovely, I guess, you know, nothing traumatic happened, right? Okay. Well, I have to use this one. <laughs> Thanks, Ashy Snow. You gonna buy some uh, dog biscuits? Will do. Will do. All right. Let me get. Let's get going on this. So this is the Dylan Rounds case. Uh, back in June of 2022, her, his mother even came on my show uh, once, and I interviewed her a couple different times too. And it was it was weird. It was a weird case because he was just some um, you know a young kid. I mean, he was a young adult, and he I think he what was he 18 or 19, and he owned farmland in Lucen, Utah, and he was just gonna try to grow crops and be a farmer and his grandfather bought you know him and his grandfather bought the land basically his grandfather probably bought it and then he's gonna work it and then just one day because the 
it started to rain, he needed to bring the seeds that he was going to plant to uh, under a covered area, just like my video says, and you know that that, that way avoids the whole seed container to spoil you know so he brought it over there and then he, he kind of just disappeared off the face of the earth except for that there was two boots found behind a mound with a blood stain on it and the blood stain turned out to be Dylan Round's blood and they also found the DNA of James Brenner on the boot as well Anyways, let's just go. This is the a document that kind of lays out what was going on. And then we'll read this one and then that new information that just came out. And then you'll just kind of have all the information in, in a row that you need. There's a lot of people that watch this channel from other cases that have no idea about this one. Yeah, so th I mean, this is Dylan Rounds right here. That's what he looks like. He's just a young kid. I mean, man, I, can you believe all the different rumors that people were saying out there? <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. I mean, just crazy. Uh, where does it start? So there it is. On May 30th, 2022, Box Elder County Dispatch received the call of a missing 19-year-old. He went missing on the 28th but he was reported missing on the 30th. He was last seen, and people kept talking, oh, I, he was seen in Lucent on the 27th. And I was just trying to tell people at the time it's irrelevant anymore that he was seen in Lucent on the 27th when we know that he called his grandmother on the 28th in the morning and he needed to move his grain truck. So it's irrelevant. Anything prior to that, like, where was he? Ooh, was he at the... the you know, you got to figure out... I mean, it might not be completely irrelevant, but it's not a big deal. Like, you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out if he was in Lucent or something like that on the 27th or 26th or anything like that because you have proof of life because his grandmother spoke to him on the 28th at 6.51 in the morning. So I always wondered why people were always making such a big deal over, you know, where he was and... Like the couple days before and all that kind of stuff. Trying to add other people, make something into it. <clears throat> so anyways, um, on this day, Dylan Rounds contacted relatives by phone and told them that he was putting the grain truck into shelter. This, uh, let me show you that again. I mean, if you don't remember. These are circles I drew where I think he might be. Like somewhere around in that area, especially this one. So he owned this property right here, and his trailers are all around there now, but there's water there, and he was going to be planting crops, but then he drove right down here, put the grain inside of this hangar right there, there and then apparently James Brenner was living on this very same property at the time. So that's just where he was going to do, back it in right there. Now the shelter for the grain truck was reported to be on a parcel of land owned by Box Elder Land and Livestock owner JC and is adjacent to two other parcels that are owned by SH and RI, whoever those are. These parcels are open to each other and collectively used together. The subject in this case, an adult male named James Brenner. <laughs> Why do they say James Brenner and then in brackets Brenner? Like, okay, that's what they're going to refer to him later. Yeah. Has no ownership in the land, parcels mentioned above, and is squatting in a trailer located on the land. So he's just there, not paying rent living in a trailer that's just sitting there, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's that one that you see right there. Now, the missing 19-year-old male, Dylan Rounds, property is five miles walk towards the southeast, and if you remember in your visually, it's down south and then east to the right. So five-mile walk. 
Brenner's mother, or let's see, brother, Brenner and mother, Lucen resident, Dylan, or D.H., so this is a different person named Don Hill, were considered family friends. So Brenner and, let's see, Brenner and another Lucen resident were considered family friends of Dylan Rounds. Whatever that means, family friends. In searching for the missing 19-year-old male, Brenner was interviewed by Box Elder County Sheriff's Office on June 7, 2022. Don was also subsequently interviewed by law enforcement on or around uh, June 11, 2022. Box Elder County, in their search for the missing 19-year-old male, Dylan Rounds, requested assistance from the FBI and the Davis County Sheriff's Office. On June 16th, 2022, let me turn this too loud. The music. On June 16th, 2022, so now we're, you know, a little over two weeks after he went, maybe almost three weeks, about 20 days later, uh, Box Elder, County Sheriff's Office, with the assistance of the FBI, executed a search warrant at the trailer where Brenner was living. During that search, ball ammunition, ignition caps, black powder, and speed loads, all related to muzzle loading, were located and photographed in the trailer, but the items were not seized at this time by Box Elder County Sheriff's Office. There were no muzzle loader firearms located in the trailer at that time. So when they went in there, they saw evidence that firearms had been there, but couldn't find them. And then four days later, a friend and neighbor of Brenner, Don, was interviewed by the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office and the FBI. During that interview, Don advised that after Dylan Rounds went missing and sometime after Brenner's initial June 7th, 2022 interview with Box Elder County Sheriff's Office. Brenner brought three black powder guns over to Don's residence and asked him to safe keep them. When Don Hill asked why, Brenner stated he needed to do this for his own safety and that the last time he had trouble with the law, they took everything from him and he did not want the things he had left to be taken again. Don Hill agreed to store the muzzle loaders for him. At the time of the interview, Don Hill turned over the muzzle loaders to Box Elder County, who booked them into evidence. So Don was holding these weapons for James Brenner, three muzzle loaders, and um, then he gave them to the FBI when they came by. Except it's weird because there's another gun. So on June 21st, 2022, Don Hill was again interviewed by the FBI. So this is later. During his interview, Don advised that Brenner had also brought him a 22 caliber rifle around the same time he had brought over the muzzle loaders. Don Hill told us that he didn't mention the 22 rifle when interviewed before because he had been owed money by the rifle's original owner, and that he felt that he should have claim over the... I mean, what a ridiculous... I mean, I, I got to tell you, I've read... You know, even back then when we read this, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's just so ludicrous. I mean, 22s aren't even really that expensive. And, you know, so he, he thought, wow, you know, the guy, the guy... The original... I mean, I don't even know how he knows who the original gun owner is. And apparently the 22 caliber rifle was just sitting around in this trailer when it was squatted upon. And then, so Don thinks, well, it's, you know, it's, he did, the guy that owned it before owed me money, so I didn't give it to the FBI when they asked about it. But see, Don isn't the one that's been arrested recently, by the way. <laughs> I mean, but that, that should be... Somewhere in the obstruction of justice, at least. I mean, that's... At least he turned it in, you know, the next day or a week later. So, let's see. Rifle's original owner and that he felt that he should have claim over the twenty-two rifle that Brenner asked him to store to cover the debt. 
He explained to us that the rifle had been left in a trailer on the property where Brenner, so it had been left in a trailer on the property where Brenner had been living prior to Brenner living there, so prior to him squatting there, by a person who owed Don money. Brenner, upon moving into the trailer, had taken possession of it. So people just leave, like Don knew that there was this 22 caliber just sitting around in a, in a trailer, and he just let it sit there, even though he knew that the person owed him money, and then... He, and then a squatter randomly goes in there, and now he took possession of it, and then he... Did. <laughs> Come on. This just sounds ludicrous to me. Had been left in the trailer and property where Brenner had been living prior to Brenner living there by a person who owed Don money. Brenner, upon moving into the trailer, had taken possession of, of it. Don Hill knew that Brenner wasn't allowed to have firearms um, of his... Because of his criminal history, Don turned over, turned over to the FBI the 22 caliber rifle and case that Brenner had personally handed to him, and had asked him to store. See, something's not, something doesn't really make sense to me. You got Brenner bringing over four guns originally, three muzzle loaders, and then a 22 caliber rifle, and then Don doesn't give the freaking FBI all four guns when they first ask just the three muzzle loaders because whoever owned the 22 caliber that was also given to him by Brenner was uh, like person that owned it prior owed him money so he just thought well I don't need to give it to him because they it, you know that person owed me money and I'm going to go sell it sometime I don't know man Is anybody, does anybody out there would you do that that seems so unreasonable. I think it's crazy. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> the rifle was loaded with five rounds of 22 caliber ammunition. The 22 caliber rifle is a Winchester model 69 22 and i think that's probably the murder weapon actually and that makes it even more suspicious that don thought of hiding it but maybe he thought better of it later i, I don't know on june 21st 2022 another search warrant was conducted at the trailer where brenner was currently living during this warrant box elder county sheriff sees a muzzle loader one box of 45 lead round ball ammunition one box of Spear 570 lead ball, one box of Federal 45 lead ball ammunition, ignition caps, four pounds of uh, Hor let's see, Hornady black powder and speed loads, and booked them into evidence. James Renner was sentenced to 33 months in prison for a conviction of felon in possession of a firearm. Renner also has additional felony convictions on his criminal history. So now he's back in... Uh, I think, you know, that's breaking parole, and he's, I think he got arrested again and was back in prison, I believe. I think this might be the same. Has to safe keep them, yeah, yeah, yeah. During the interview, Don Hill advised that Brenner had also bought, yep. On June 21st, another search warrant. Okay, so it's pretty much the same document. So other than that, then we've got the new one. So now you have context for that. I mean, just imagine there's people searching all over the place, They're looking for them. They brought helicopters out there, looking all over the place. And, you know, he, he's still never been found. So, the 19-year-old victim was reported as missing person on or about May 30th, 2022. Sheriff deputies, along with search and rescue crews, immediately got to work on efforts to locate the victim, but were unsuccessful. During the search, deputies discovered a pair of boots belonging to the victims nearby. One boot had blood stain uh, that DNA analysis confirmed belonged to the victim, in addition to DNA belonging to defendant. 
The victim's phone records were also obtained, which showed movement on the day of his disappearance on a remote property in Lucen, where a defendant was squatting. Phone data showed that the last signal from the victim's phone was at the Lucen pond, and a search of the pond led to the discovery of the victim's phone. So his phone last ping was right here at that Lucen pond, and it makes you wonder, like, did he have the body in the car at that point, toss the phone, and then he kept driving up way out there somewhere? Hey, Jessica Schubach, thank you. Yes, everybody, this is a, just a normal night. Regular night, even though it's Sunday. Thank you, neighbor at... <laughs> Oh, see your neighbor of yours, Amber? How are you feeling, Amber? I was, I was trying to, I was just about to go message you and then something distracted me. Yeah, it could be anywhere. You have to have a way of tracking Brenner is really what it comes down to. Oh, good. The victim's phone records were also obtained, which showed movement on the day of his disappearance in a remote property in Lucen, where a defendant was squatting. Phone data showed that the last signal of the victim's phone was at the Lucen pond, and a search of the pond led to the discovery of the victim's phone. A digital forensic download of the phone was conducted and led to the discovery of a time... I mean, that, that is just insane, you guys. The time-lapse video. What do you guys think of that? I mean, that is... I mean, you can set your phone up to, to shoot time-lapse, right? It's almost as if he had it out, and it was already... All he had to do was press a button or something, and then somehow it filmed Brenner. I mean... I could... Let's see. Like, he's washing his hands, there's blood on his arms, and he's washing a gun. Unbelievable. A digital forensic download of the phone was conducted and led to the discovery of a time-lapse video with a timestamp taken at the time of the victim's disappearance. So it must be around 6 something, you know, maybe 7 some in the morning, like 7.15 or so. The video showed defendant with blood stains on his arms and shirt as he's cleaning a gun. So he's cleaning a gun, and he's got blood on him. But it's Dylan Rounds' phone taking a bunch of snap uh, shots in a row. Thank you, Adnaram. Olivia Dorado and Jessica Schubach. The video showed the defendant with blood stains on his arms and shirt as he is cleaning a gun the search uh, the, excuse me the shirt which defendant is wearing in the video was analyzed so they actually recovered that shirt and then dylan round's blood dna was found on the shirt defendant was interviewed and made several claims that corroborated forensic evidence in addition to making numerous demonstrably false statements Despite a thorough investigation and extensive search, the victim's body was not recovered due to defendant removing and concealing it. And then again up here, during the search, deputies discovered a pair of boots belonging to the victim nearby. One boot had blood stain, and then the blood belonged to Dylan Rounds. And they also found, I mean, isn't it just weird, this whole thing here? Why would you put the boots behind this mound? I mean, why not just keep the boots with Dylan, wherever you put Dylan, put the boots, you know? Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Instead, he walks all the way out there and puts boots behind a mound that would very likely be found at some point. It's kind of a, just a strange element. Still doesn't make sense in any way. I mean, you can say, well, maybe he was trying, well, you know, it still doesn't make sense, you know?
Yeah. It's one of those elements that uh, we might not ever get an answer to. I think if they don't find his body, he'd never admit to it. So the, the key is, is to try to track Brenner's movement. But I have a feeling you either use some old vehicle or I don't, I don't really know how, what his mode of transportation was. Do you guys know if he had his own vehicle at the time? I mean, he's squatting, so maybe he's just walking around. No, that wouldn't give the illusion that he was walking off. Yeah. Walk, uh, illusion of walking off, you'd put a boot maybe here and then another one over there just in case they found it. But they were just right together on the other side of this mound. So they were trying to be concealed in plain sight, basically. But why, why do that? Why not just take them to wherever they took Dylan? You know? <laughs> He's under the mound. Give me a break. God, uh, you don't think they've checked the mound, you know, like they're that stupid that they just haven't even checked it yet? This is a mound of dirt. Looks like a grave. We're not going to check it, though, even though we found these two boots. No. No, that's not. But that, that, that just does that make sense? See, what you typed in, Blaze. While that's possible, does that seem like common sense? What you wrote. Perhaps he wore them and walked out there, and then switched to his own, his own back. To throw the bloodhounds off. Huh? Oh, you mean like make fake tracks as if he walked there? I, I don't know. Yeah. Mm hmm Uh, which, which, well, we don't know really ramble on because it wasn't in the actual documents. The grain truck or the sea truck was backed in and then apparently when they got there, they moved the truck out of the grain shed. And then Dylan's pickup truck, they say it was clean, but he had just cleaned his truck too and, you know, all that stuff. But another thing that the family mentions is that a, a gun, well, I think it was a gun, just sort of appeared in his trailer at some point. But that's not something we're hearing law enforcement say. Yeah, well, it's kind of a weird place to even look for boots, you know, or anything. You know, that's, uh, you're not going to look out there right away. <laughs> I mean, you're looking for Dylan, so you're going to be driving on the roads, driving around, and then eventually you come over here and you start having people walk around. And, I mean, that's just such an odd place. I don't think anybody would just go, wait, I wonder if the boots are behind that mound over there. Uh, we don't know any reason why Dylan was killed. I mean, everybody's always so critical of like where, you know, oh man, they should have found, they should have done this, they should have done that, they should have found this, they should have found that. And, you know, just because it looks like it. Like if the boots were right there and they didn't find him in the first two days, you'd still be like, yeah, look how close those are. Man, they should have found them. Well, why? I mean, somebody should have walked right there. Somebody should have walked right there. I mean, we don't know, you know? I mean, I think they knew that the... Here, here's what they probably were saying. Was, oh, it looks like he dropped off the grain. He disappeared, though. Thanks, your gypsy. It'll be interesting to see how the case went, because I know that Candace was really um, not very, she, she thought Box Elder was just terrible.
And it's hard to really know. It sounds like they got the FBI and another de sheriff's department in there immediately. So what, what do you do with that? Maybe someday we'll get to hear what actually was going down there. Hello? Anybody there? <laughs> you guys aren't even, nobody's typing anything in. Yeah, well, we don't even know. Maybe there wasn't a beef. Or was it that, or was he the one that got fired and they argued or something? About something about washing or a hose or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. It was so long ago, like a year ago. I just wanted to give people that hadn't heard of the case the background information just in general. And if you go to East Idaho News on YouTube, they have a whole bunch of interviews with Can. The last one with Candace Cooley, I think, is pretty good. Hey, Eugenie, did you hear your uh, Mary Lou sing happy birthday for you? Last night at the end of the show? Yeah, that, that has nothing to do with the case anymore, the Zaza. So. Yeah, that, that absolutely um, not related. Yeah, the guy early on, yep. He, can, he, he hadn't part of it. And he wasn't bloody, he was just kind of... He wanted Dylan to give him a ride, remember? I actually forgot his name because he became unimportant. Yeah, but I'm not sure if he was the one. I know Dylan fired somebody, and maybe it was Brenner that he fired, and Brenner was squatting, and then he had nothing. I'm not really sure. I know, I always say that too. I do want to know why the boots are behind the mound, though. I do want to know that. No, so he, he fired Don? Oh, okay. Well, I thought Don was... Uh, so he's just a worker out there as well? It's been so long. We covered it... Uh, gosh. Last time I did it, anything on him was back in probably like late... 2022, maybe not even that, like August or September, something. It's just such a, you know, there was so little information and everybody made up all these big stories. Just remember, remember the private investigator, Wacko, that Jim guy? Think how ridiculous that person is at this point. I mean, just, just think back to your, in your mind, how absolutely idiotic everything that that guy was saying. Yeah, remember him? <laughs> wow, that was some crazy stuff. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Well, Mary Lou was like, hey, she didn't even hear me sing. Oh, yeah, everybody. And he just had all the answers. And then he just disappeared. Wasn't right at all. But, boy, did he have this huge crowd. If you, if you didn't have him on your show, you were a nobody. You had to have Jim the P.I. on there. Or you were just a pile of crap. Except he was a pile of crap. He didn't have any good information really at all. It was all complete garbage. Every single bit of it. Uh, that's too... Yeah, good for him. D, why don't you go watch it? Uh, no, I mean, he's an embarrassing person. This is, is the reality of it. I mean, he's one of those ones that... Yeah, you know, listen, I tell you what, you know, whatever. <laughs> it was a terrible imitation, but 
I know it's sort of a nasally thing, but he just goes on and on, on and on, just endlessly uh, of nonsensical information that isn't true. All right, well, I think I'm just going to switch over to the the Koberger. So, they, you know, I think that case is coming to an end. It, now we just wait for a trial to hear all of the other information that they have. And I think it'd be great. There isn't a larger conspiracy, except maybe that Don guy is a little weird about the why he didn't. The real reason. That's such a crazy reason to not give the FBI the gun. Well, you owed me money, so... I mean, I don't know, man. You're investigating a murder. Yep, so here's the Koberger stuff here. Um, this is in the... I believe it's, yeah, the Pennsylvania search warrant. And it's at uh, 119... It's amazing, you can almost grab it. Let me go to Koberger up in here. I think I have information. <laughs> Koberger. Yeah, there it is. 119 Lamsden Drive, Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. And that's the house right there. Uh, book with underline underlining on page 118 it would be cool to know what was he underlined AT&T bill for Brian Koberger a Glock 22 uh, what is it generation 5 40 caliber serial number so and so BM maybe K V S Q I or that's Missing part of a letter, I don't know. Smith & Wesson pocket knife. Folder. Uh, folder hunting. Is that hunting? No, attaining. Folder containing. God, it's just terrible writing. Folder containing vehicle paperwork. Acer laptop model. It was an Acer laptop. And Kareen or Green something substance in green container. Hmm, I don't know what that is. Green leafy substance, you mean like marijuana? In green container. Document green leafy substance in plastic bag, you mean like marijuana? White paper with pass, uh, let's see, pass, hmm, pass something, maybe password, I don't know. Power cable, cell phone, three Glock 40 caliber magazine, a book, black face mask, prescriptions, I mean, black face mask, so these like, the COVID masks are literally like a balaclava almost, you know. Prescription, black gloves, one black hat, one black mask. And look at that, New Balance shoes for God's sakes. Man, what does that say about me? Dark colored jacket. I think it's dark jacket. Dark something again dark color dark color shirt dark color shirt dark color shirt dark color pants dark color pant again I guess God it's just ridiculous how poor I mean you, I mean how are they gonna even tell what they collected? Something about uh, plastic glove, one, 
<laughs> this is so bad. Wow. Criminal psychology book. Dowman and something. I don't even know what that says. Them programmed. Like, what does this mean right here? Them programmed butt. <laughs> Boo <-ha. coughs> Banner talker. <laughs> you know, whatever that says. It's ridiculous. Black box, Samsung, two pain, oh God, what does this even say? Is that supposed to be plain? Two P, U, something or other. Are you guys trying to read this? It's just terrible. Let me see if the other one's better. So you think it says, well, there, that's pear there. Yeah, I can read that one. Mm -hmm. Wow. So look at they make the the R in go all the way around as if it's an N. That's pear. What a joke. Jesus. That's just. Swab, Ziploc bag with pin zipper, plastic baggie with green zipper, 36 dimes, 32 nickels, 8 pennies, gloves, receipts, car insurance card, car registration, hiking boots, comfort in, room key holder, and stay information, tire irons, shovel, goggles, floor mats, reflective vest, used water bottles, Wrench, door panel, or I mean wrench, door panel, seats, and seat cushions, headrest, seat belt, visor, fiber, brake pedal, gas pe pedals, phone charger, band-aid, wrapper, uh, wrappers, maps, documents, seat belt, boot. Yeah, and this just lists all the things they were looking for. I don't really want to read through that. I mean, just tons of stuff. I mean, knives, sheaths, other weapons, document records, medication, drugs, da 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 da. I mean, just basically everything. Anything that might point to something. And then it goes back through and then does the entire affidavit that we've already gone through before. So this one has more items listed. Mm -hmm. Definitely seems like there should be more people that know about him out there than current than currently. Mm-hmm. Well, so I think this is a, a man's something drawing. A man's something drawing? I don't know. Thanks, Tighten Up. Uh, and yes, everybody, uh, on this channel, every single night, we raise money to help support my channel so I can keep doing the shows and also at the same time I try to donate over 50% of the ret well I always do more but it's you know over 50% of the net revenue it's not a try thing to uh, true crime related charities and that way 
um, you know, I can help support do what I'm doing. Now, one day, you know, maybe in the future, I think, you know, maybe I could switch all the way over to YouTube. But it doesn't feel like that a lot of times because some nights it's just sort of like, whoa, you know. So hold on a second. Thanks, tighten up. I've seen lists out there as well, you know, like Koberger items. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think they're just looking for things that he might have been wearing that night. Uh, we don't know if he was well, stalking anybody. So there's a whole bunch of information that's not been released, but everybody talks about it as if it is true. Oh, yeah, he was looking at so-and-so's Instagram. He was doing this. He was doing that. How do you know? Because you saw an account that looked like Coburkers? As we know, a lot of trolls out there that in, they literally will go out and make an account that looks just like a killer and then comment around and everybody goes wild and they laugh and laugh and laugh at all the people who bought into it and think it's real. So it's hard to really know. Law enforcement knows and it very well could be something like that. What's a world drawing? Yeah. I mean, we've gone over that warrant or the arrest affidavit many times. That's also in both warrants there. Uh, which, what is Lindsay, which one? A man's mind drawing? <laughs> A man's mind one? I don't know. Ten. Something inside glove. Inside box. Or so there was a glove inside of a box. So who knows what that is right there? But it was a glove inside of a box. Thank you, Georgina Stolicker. Dune colored. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wrote this should get fired immediately. Because we don't even know what you collected at this point. In fact, why don't you just type it in? <laughs> yeah, because they, they have gender specific wound dressings, Zozo. <laughs> uh, uh, it doesn't look like anything, it looks like a bunch of garbage. I mean, I, I'm, I don't have, I gotta, I'll be honest, I don't have great writing, you know. But I'm also not writing documents like this so that somebody need, can interpret it later, you know. Huh? Gray tags, what happens when you defend the police? P I don't even know what you're talking about, Joey. Sorry, man. Uh, let's see, motherboard. So I get that, well, motherboard, Washington State University, paperwork. Maybe we can decipher it by finding other samples of letters that we know. All right. So something that looks like M, maybe. M. I mean, that could be mind. A man's mind drawing. He didn't put the dot for the eye, but he doesn't put dots all the way around. 
and the long sleeve shirt here doesn't even have the cross on the T. And this, my God, okay, that's a U, right? And maybe an R. <laughs> inside glove. So there's something inside of a glove that's also in a box. ID card. There it is. ID card inside glove inside box. I guarantee, I bet you that's what it is. An ID card inside glove inside box. And that's C A R D and an S maybe. So ID cards inside glove inside box. Yeah, see how there's a, it looks like an S at the end there. All right, so there's there's one. Various criminology books. What is that? Newt <laughs> lineup license card. Oh, note. God, there's no top of it. It's just N U T E. Note. Hmm. So then this is done. Well, that looks just like it should be done then, if that's a O, right? <clears throat> ah, forget it. Dark green, short sleeve shirt, black. Long sleeve shirt, black. Something, something, gray, gray jacket. I think they were really focusing in on what Dylan Mortensen said about the person wearing all black. Yeah, it could be. It's hard to know. Hello. Usually scanners add, like if you, well, if you put the contrast up uh, high, you can get it. Oh, is it a book? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm kind of just done goofing around. You know, because to me, here's the thing, everybody. Oh, yeah, we got this thing. And this is what they got. And, you know, while it's sort of interesting, the things they collected... Yeah, what does it really mean? Uh, one of these days soon, we'll go back over the affidavit again, just so that you're not. Once you go through the affidavit, you see how it's very similar to the uh, Alec Murdoch case in how they have them sort of boxed in. So after we've gone over the Alec Murdoch, I think if we went over the affidavit again somewhat soon, I have it all mapped out and everything. And remember, that's where there's missing time. And we can, um, you know, I think it'll make more sense to people that maybe it was kind of like, I don't know, I don't know. But anybody be interested in that, like in a couple weeks or something? Because we, I'd like to be familiar with it again because it's going to start ramping up before his hearing and what is it, June? Yeah. All right, you guys. I got to go use the restroom. But I'm uh, hoping not to be uh, thrown in jail tonight. Or, you know, no need for jail, I guess.
Yeah, I didn't play any music. <laughs> didn't play any music for you guys, sorry. Why would you want music? Hey, Colleen, go complain somewhere else, all right? Let's see, uh, what do we got here? All right, I'm gonna move on to the, um, yes please what, Peter? This music? Or is it this one over here? That one? No, you couldn't hear me tinkle, Russian Aloha. Okay. I, I can guarantee you that. That's in your own mind. You're not going to complain about that? Jeez. Okay. Time to... We're going to do the cold case. That's what I really wanted to just go over these articles on the cold case. And then I'm not really sure what I'll do after that. But, yeah, maybe take phone calls or... Who knows? Maybe just... Uh, maybe we'll play... Here's what we'll do. We'll do the newspapers.com super chat... Uh, leading to a case, uh, like an unknown case out there after we do the cold case, all right? So don't type stuff in because uh, it's a super chat only thing. Zozo likes to, we play it, then she just types in a, a, a guess randomly. I gotta text something. They're getting trained at work. The two step kids. Yep. But hey, but maybe before we go to that, I'm gonna have to throw myself in prison just to get the ball rolling here. We're, uh, right now we're about a third of a normal night, hour in, and usually when I read it gets worse, so uh, we gotta, we're gonna have to get moving, and then we'll get on to the Sandra Lee Morgan case, all right? <laughs> oh, that's right, I was mean to Colleen, that's right. I don't think I was mean at all, but yeah. Let me put the, uh, gotta go to jail for Colleen, that's right. Because I said, then go listen to some music somewhere else. I, I don't know what the hell I said. Tennessee shine so true. I don't think I was at all, Cindy, so I'm going to put you on time out. Hey, Christy. All right. That'll get me a uh, bar of soap. <laughs> Bar of soap inside the. Thanks, Billy Juliana. And uh, usually that is negative five, so I'm back at zero again. And that's for me not playing music. Well, there you go. There's Scouting Dude with soap on a rope. husband has to check out the Jody here. Yeah. Well, one of these days I wanted to do parts of the trial of the Jody Arias case, <laughs> like in the, like an hour at the end of each show or something. I think some of you would just be like, holy shit. I mean, it makes Alec Murdoch on the stand look like a joke. I mean, it was help with uh, bail money. Well, thank you very much. So Angela Gallagher. So where are we at now? I think we're just barely at the stage where 
the guard might look at di another direction. At Jessica, your husband has to check out the Jodi Arias videos too. Yeah, almost a, a jumpsuit, right? Thanks, Janellison. Help with bail money. I did talk to uh, message with An Angie yesterday, and, and she's interested in coming on talking about just sort of more specific stuff. The cover up machine, basically. Hey, thanks, Cindy, or Jan Allison, Cindy J, the mean person herself, and also we've got. Huh? No, I don't think it was mean at all. I thought her comment was mean. What do you think of that, Cindy? And Brenda Ivy and Renee H. Bill for you. I'm gonna throw. Um, let's see. How do I get her in prison? There we go. Cindy J is in prison. All right. <laughs> you can. You can uh, work on getting her out of there. Cindy J is now in prison. Wait, let me go back up to putting I'm Cindy J face. in there. No bail. There we go. Remain, but couldn't admit it. No parole either. She's in prison. Well, I didn't think I was mean. I think I was replying appropriately to her comment. What do you think of that? Let's see. She said. I can't even find it. Oh, what the hell? No music. And then Gray slacking. And then we need our music, damn it. And then <laughs> I think I'm. Total crap. No music. Pfft. Okay. So you now, I think if I was in court, I would, in what I said, wasn't even close to any of that. Well, I know she was just playing, but what I'm saying is, is come on. <laughs> you know? Pour some sugar on me. Thanks, Simple Life Days. Uh, lawyer fees for Harpootlian. Wow, I need him. Do you think so? All right, I'll get out of here. Bracing DJ. Yeah. It was. It was. It was an instigator. All right, I got Cindy out of there. But, hey, Cindy, if you notice, there wasn't a lot of support getting you out of prison there. You notice that? It was pretty mild help. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, my wife just came home, so I'll play this. There you go.
everybody. There's the music for you that you were waiting for all night. Absolutely incredible music. Uh, thank you very much. Isn't that awesome? I bet Colleen was doing a pirouette in her living room listening to that. Probably a glass of wine, some cheese, standing in there with the tray in her hand, just twirling around. <laughs> you know it, right? All right, so this is the case that I'm going to be talking about here. And this is all you get. Sandra Lee Morgan, unsolved homicide victim, September 23rd, 1997, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Good night, everybody. I'm kidding. That, that was the, that's all I had to start with, um, to work with there. They had that. Then newspapers.com right here. I mean, this is one of those weird ones, you guys. I mean, this is the monsters that are out there. Dancer bound and gagged. A strip club dancer found dead in the apartment where she lived alone and had been bound and gagged, authorities said. The body of Sandra Morgan, 26, was found Wednesday on her bed. She had been covered with a robe and a bloody kitchen knife that was apparently used to cut her throat was found nearby, said Allegheny County Coroner Cyril Wecht. Well, there he, there he is. There is a level of violence attributed to this that we don't normally see, said homicide investigator Ron Freeman. A friend of Morgan had not seen her for a few days and called police, when police found her, she apparently had been dead for a few hours, Wex said. Police consulted a handwriting expert to analyze a note from the apartment that contained a name, a telephone number, and some words police did not reveal. Huh. Authorities believe Morgan worked at the Bear Elegance Club in the city's warehouse district. And if anybody wants to, Dan Carr, if you're out there, if you want to look up to see where that was, the Bear Elegance Club, I kind of did the thing in newspapers where I looked for an ad, but it sort of led to somewhere else, but it was called Bear Elegance, E-L-E-G-A-N-C-E -E -E Club, back at the time. Hey, thank you so much, classical guitarist. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Maybe I need to turn on, if I can turn on just in time, will it work? Okay, I just turned it on, let's see. Ah, uh, well just look at the, look at the letters. I used to go told the school good just like that music though. No, thank you, Jeff. We're going to play it as many times as possible um, to make you upset. So if I can get that to play more times, I can't wait because I hope to play it a thousand more times tonight for you, Jeff. Although that would be $50,000, but now, yeah, I mean, that would be pretty strange. All right. So, I mean, this, you can already tell this case is pretty brutal starting off. I mean, it's... Well, there, there's another one. <laughs> hey, maybe it's going to happen. Who knows? Thanks, Ashy Snow.
So it was up on the third floor of this apartment. And that's her in the papers at the time. And this one's a probably more comprehensive article, so we're, we're going to check this one out. This is on September 26, 1997, and that's when this took place. September 23rd is the date that they think she was killed. <laughs> hey, look at that. I don't know. That one might be the cat eye scouting, dude. I'm not sure where the cutoff is, but... I think it's forty nine ninety nine. I think that one might still be the original. So we'll see, but we can all just pretend anyway. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, that's the cat eye one because you're exactly fifty. Maybe I'll make it fifty oh. Is oh, that it? Maybe. Where'd you get it from, Dan? Hey, thanks. Scouting dude, but we didn't get the uh... Where did uh, you get the 3100 Liberty Avenue? Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, is this even? That yeah, should be in Pittsburgh. Okay, that's probably a thing because this is the industrial area. All right, so this is where. Thank you for getting that. I just, I didn't have a lot of time. I was trying to find articles about the case. Um, wait, what was the name of it again? Bear Elegance. Here, elegance. Okay, so there you go. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, it's probably almost the same thing now. Called cheerleaders. Yeah. Cheerleaders, gentlemen's club. Yeah, it's the same damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's still the same thing it was 20 something years ago. That's why it looks like, remember the, the building, the restaurant, or whatever you want to call it, the bar in the Idaho 4 case where they went? It kind of looked like one of these places. There's no windows in it. So there it is. That's where she worked. And her apartment was right here. You kind of get the feeling that maybe somebody was, oh, that's kind of interesting. It's up on a hill there. Like that somebody was watching her there and followed her home maybe and knew where she lived. And maybe she even knew the person. All right, here we go. And there she is, Sandra L. Morgan, 26. Thanks for getting that, Dan. Sandra L. Morgan, 26, was a dancer at Bear Elegance, a strip, uh, let's see, a strip district nightclub? Okay. Strip di district? <laughs> that's kind of a weird, you mean a, that's not there. I don't think they meant that. You mean it's an industrial, maybe it is, I don't know, maybe it's strip, I don't know pretty weird wording there but anyways a woman was killed in her East Liberty apartment uh, may have been it says a woman who was killed in her East Liberty apartment may have been bound and tortured before being stabbed repeatedly and having her throat slashed by someone who probably knew her Allegheny County coroner Dr. Suro H. Wecht said yesterday Sandra L. Morgan 26 who had lived in Greensburg 
but moved to an apartment at 5800 Stanton Avenue about a month ago, had been a dancer at Bear Elegance, a strip district club, I guess that's what it's called, for about nine months. Months, excuse me. Wecht and Morgan might have been handcuffed at her wrists and ankles while her killer stabbed her 14 times before cutting her throat. In addition, he said, superficial cuts on her throat indicated she may have been tortured and that an attempt had been made to strangle her. Wow, so they were just kind of putting it here but not pressing all the way in and taunting her. Oh, man, jeez. The killing, Wex said, was atypical for the region because she was an exotic dancer. The nature of the wounds, the position of the body, the likelihood of sexual overtones, the use of three knives. Wex said the killer used three kitchen knife, type knives, breaking two of the blades during the attack in Morgan's third floor apartment. One kitchen knife and two broken blades, each about six inches long, were found under the body, but no handles for them were found. Wow. There are 14 stab wounds, and if we're right, that these stab wounds come first, then why go back and slash the throat? This uh, connotes great hostility not a desire to kill for whatever reason, Wex said. This is what we call an overkill, and the kind of thing we see that in our business raises an immediate impression, a strong reference for us that there is a sexual overtone. Yeah, it's almost like a profiling here, Wex. There was no evidence of sexual assault to Morgan and tests are being conducted to see if there had been consensual sex. Police discovered Morgan's body face down on her bed with her feet touching the floor. So that means her midsection was right at the end of the bed. There was no, let's see. Police discovered Morgan's body face down on her bed with her feet touching the floor. Yeah. So basically you have to be right at your midsection to have your feet touching the floor because if you're any further, your thighs would keep your legs pretty much straight. Right? And let's see. Bed and her feet touching the floor and her palms pointed upwards. Wow, that's kind of weird. See, normally your hands would be down, but her palms are facing upwards. And been light, nice enough they're at her sides or whatever, but I mean, you know, that's pretty weird, right? Your face down and your palms are upwards? Normally you'd have them uh, palms down. She had been blindfolded with her bra and gagged with a sock. I mean, my God, th this sounds like a serial killer type person here. Right? Blindfolded with her bra and gagged with her sock. She was wearing a bathrobe. I mean, look at the detail in these articles. It's crazy. I mean, this, is, this isn't even really old. It's 1997. She was wearing a bathrobe and t-shirt and a pair of panties were found underneath her body. So she was wearing a bathrobe and a t-shirt. But her bra was used as a blindfold and her panties were taken off and they were, or weren't on at least and they were under her body. Wex said it appeared that all the stabbing took place on the bed. Marks on her wrists and ankles were consistent with having had handcuffs applied to them, he said. She was not handcuffed when her body was discovered. Wow. Furthermore, because there were no defensive wounds, stabbing victims often suffer gashes on their hands in trying to fend off their attacker. It was possible Morgan had been bound before she was killed. 
It certainly would be consistent with that, Weck said, while adding it also was possible. The first blow had disabled her so much that she was not able to fight back. Commander Ronald Freeman of the investigation branch said both Morgan's current boyfriend and former boyfriend had cooperated with authorities, even giving them samples for possible DNA comparison. Morgan's current boyfriend, William Gaston, called police Wednesday evening and told them he was concerned for her well-being because... He had not heard from her since 7.30 a.m. on Tuesday, and she had not been to work for two days. Gaston told officers he was worried because Morgan had heart problems and had been admitted to Forbes Regional Hospital about a week earlier. He accompanied officers when they went to the apartment about 9 p.m. Wednesday. When they arrived, the apartment door was unlocked. Hmm. Freeman said detectives have not uncovered anything in Morgan's lifestyle to lead them in a particular direction to look for her killer. She wasn't a prostitute. She wasn't involved with drugs. She's never been arrested, said Freeman, adding that detectives were talking to friends and relatives to try to form a profile of Morgan to aid them in their probe. Everybody's been cooperating in the investigation. He said detectives just don't know if, uh, if there was any connection between her work at Bear Elegance and her death. Detectives said he visit, let's see, paid a visit there last night to try to learn more about Morgan. So they went to the strip club. Mar Marlin, the Bear Elegance manager, said Morgan was a punctual employee who usually dance three or four nights a week using the name Casey. Unlike many of the other dancers at the club who come from out of town, Marlon said, Morgan had danced at other local spots before going to work at Bear Elegance. I really didn't know her that well, but everyone seemed to like her. Uh, we never had any problems with her, he said. He said employees were collecting money last night to help pay for Morgan's funeral expenses and to give her uh, and to her young son. So she had a kid, too. Marlon would not allow reporters to interview other dancers last night, saying half the girls can't even work because they're so upset. And by the way, let me, let me uh, I wanted to thank uh, Scouting Dude again and Ashy Snow up there in Classical guitarist for your those generous super chats. Uh, very cool. Thank you very much, Beth Radish. I think we have a just got a Portland Trailblazer with that name, or maybe it's Reddish. Never mind, <laughs> Reddish. Anyways, thank you guys so much, everybody, for supporting the channel. Really makes a big difference for me. And also, you know, allows me to do more things. Uh, what guy, Cindy? Let's see. Unlike many of the other dancers at the club who came out of town, Marlon said Morgan had danced at Loya and then she went there. Thank you, Mickey Duff. I really didn't know her that well, but everyone seemed to like her. We never had any problems with her. And they were collecting money for her and her kid. Marlon would not allow reporters to interview other dancers last night, saying half the girls can't even work because they're so upset. Marlon said all the dancers sign cards when they begin work that tells club managers who will be picking them up if anyone at the end of their shifts and what kind of car the person drives. Before dancers leave, club bouncers make sure no unexpected cars are in the lot, he said. A valet at the club said Morgan usually was dropped off and picked up by friends. Detectives were using somewhat esoteric investigative tools in trying to track 
or to try to crack the case. On Wednesday, Freeman called handwriting analyst Michelle Dresbold to the scene to examine a note found near the body. The note contained a name, a phone number, and words, but Freeman declined to reveal what the note said or what bearing it might have on the case. I mean, it'd be interesting if the uh, the note you know, she didn't write it, and the words were something related to the crime. Also, detectives were trying to find a laboratory in the United States that can analyze naked DNA, DNA that escapes from dying cells and can be recovered from a slew of everyday... Oh, so I guess they that's before they called it touch DNA. Hopefully they kept all those items, the bra, the... The three different knives, the uh, everything, the the sock used as a gag, everything that the person would have touched being there. Hopefully, they kept it all. Yeah, that's just wild. And the thing is, is because she's a dancer. People go, oh, it's a dancer. Now, if I told the same story and it was like, uh, you know, 19-year-old girl coming home from her freshman year uh, class in college or something like that, and the same thing happened, people would have a much more, oh, my God, wow, what's going on? Who did it? You know, that kind of thing. Like the chat would look different. So even in this case, when you say out loud that she's a, a dancer, doesn't have the same, you know, concern. Kind of sad, isn't it? Let me, let me pull this one out. Police see clues in stripper murder. So here's another one. Another article. This one's from the 28th, so two days later. A 26 year old stripper was brutally. And notice how the, every article, and there's even a critical article coming up, but I, I always I point this stuff out all the time. Like it says, you know, every. A 26 year old stripper. Why not just say. A 26-year-old woman. Why, why, you know, you throw that in there. It's almost like they put it in there to make the non-strippers feel better. Oh, okay, well, I'm not a, I can't be a victim then because I'm not a sex worker. You know? Or not a, it's not a sex worker. They're just strippers. Exotic dancer. I'm not an exotic dancer. So, you know, uh, you're going to be safe, you know. We're going to keep pounding it home though that she's a stripper right in an apartment building with no secrets apparently like, like it's really thin walls here so in an apartment building with no secrets apparently no one overheard the brutal slaying of an exotic dancer Sandra Morgan 26 was found Wednesday night face down on a bloody bed wearing a t-shirt and bathrobe her throat had been slashed, and she had been stabbed at least 14 times with three knives. A bra was wrapped around her eyes, and she was gagged with a sock. A pair of panties was beneath her body. We have a woman murdered in an apartment building that is not soundproof. People hear everything, everything else, and see other things, but hear or see nothing here. It's almost... As if a phantom or shadow did this and left, police commander Ronald Freeman said. Three days of interviewing neighbors in the Morgan, Morgan's three-story apartment building have led police no closer to her killer. Marks on Morgan's wrists and ankles indicate she had been bound, but police found no handcuffs or other restraints. I bet nobody in this chat has heard of this case before. I haven't. I think it's interesting. It's crazy. It's They gave us a lot of details. And it's not even, 
you know, just nothing, nothing out there. I did gray only because I, I guarantee it. Complicating the investigation is that Morgan was friendly and knew a lot of people, Freeman said. The question then is, was she friendly to the wrong person? Um, so the attacker didn't break in. Her apartment door was unlocked when police discovered it. The question then is, was she friendly to the wrong person? Police found the broken blades of two kitchen knives under the bathrobe Morgan wore. An intact kitchen knife believed to have been used to slash the dancer's throat was found near the bed. Allegheny County Coroner Cyril Weck said some of the stab wounds suggested Morgan's attacker may have tortured her with shallow carving type cuts. Wecht also said several things indicate that Morgan may have known her attacker, the brutality of the slang, and the lack of evidence forced entry into her apartment or of robbery. An autopsy disclosed no signs that she had been sexually assaulted. Morgan's sister, or excuse me, S.A. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, God, God, S.A. Come on. Don't, don't, don't ding me. It's S.A. Please, I, let me... No, it's, it's called sexual assault, okay, everybody? It's a real thing. It's not a joke. It's an actual thing, all right? So when you go to these channels out there and you see them talking about using S-Aid and, you know, just dumbass words for, you know, like suicide, unalived, just run for the hills, man. You are into for some just ludicrous shit going on on, on that channel, okay? All right, great. Yeah, PC Central, man. You say that, oh, no, you said unalived. I mean, you said <laughs> suicide. That's what I say when I see unalived. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I think it's absolutely ludicrous. Okay? And I'm not sure why people put up with it. And they think it's almost cute to sort of imitate it. You know, and, and here's how you know. Yeah, people go, well, it was just for the algorithm thing. Well, then why do other people use those phrases when they're just talking about it? That's because they were told to do that. I think so too, Zozo. I think it's absolute garbage. <sighs> yeah, it's so woke. Yeah, exactly. Embarrassing. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, I, I am okay with other things. Like, for example, Sarah... Um, no, I'm not going to... I, I want to say her name wrong again. I always say it wrong. But she may... Like, when we were talking about prostitutes, she said, well, the people... Let's just... Let's call them sex workers. I think that's so much of a... That, why not, you know? See, that's different to me because sex worker is actually a little bit more explanation, you know, explanatory. That is exactly what they are. And it's not, um, you know, it doesn't have the same, like if you say hooker or um, prostitute, it doesn't have the same negative connotation that comes with it. So I'm okay with stuff like that, but... You know, unalived, really? The, the person who was... <laughs> people that killed themselves know exactly what it means. D.I., do you hear what Gra I said? Uh, what did I say? I don't know what I said. Oh, yeah. Did you hear what Gray said? That one? <laughs> hey, is that what you were doing? Hey, good. That's awesome. Yeah, the wackos on social media. Yeah, they're just... Now, apparently, my 3D animations that I do are, are I'm untalented merely because somebody else made one. 
okay, yeah, they did they did one. It's different than the way the one the way I do it. You know, I try to make it look a little bit more realistic. You know, I mean that person's talented too. It's not easy to do animations, you guys. It's not easy to make the models. We, you've seen me making the models on the show before. It's not easy. But like, like, can you imagine people being so bored that they create a post saying, "Gray doesn't have any talent. Look at this one." I mean. <laughs> Why don't you grow up, you know, join a group and talk about the video itself. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. All right, let me get back to this. Oh, I think we're right over here. Morgan had moved into the apartment about a month. Morgan's sister said the dancer had trained as a medical technician but couldn't find... A job. Morgan had moved into the apartment about a month ago, thereby gaining a measure of self confidence, Tina Winnick said. She was trusting, in fact, a little too trusting. The big city was not for my sister, said Winnick, who lives in Greensburg. In a plea for clues, $5,000 has been offered for information. That leads to an arrest. Police put up 2,000. Morgan's employer, the Bear Elegance Strip Bar in Pittsburgh, added 2,000, and her former boyfriend contributed 1,000. Mark Mertland of Greensburg <coughs> said he and Morgan had a relationship from 1989 until 1995 while Morgan lived in the Greensburg area. The couple had a son, Andrew, born in 1993, whom uh, Mertlin is raising under court order. He said Morgan loved her son, had 25% custody, and last saw him in August. Morgan's uh, current boyfriend called police Wednesday evening, concerned she had not shown up for work for two days. William Gasson told police he last saw Morgan alive on Tuesday at 7.30 a.m., and met officer I mean what a horrible thing that would have been. And met officers at her apartment building shortly after nine PM Wednesday when her body was discovered. Both Gaston and Mertlin have given police blood samples for DNA analysis. Police have also asked a handwriting expert to analyze a note found in Morgan's bedroom. That includes a name, a phone number, and a few words. Freeman would not give the details. Police have found no evidence that Morgan was a sex worker or a drug user. She had never been arrested. Colleagues at Bear Elegance said Morgan danced under the name Casey to reflect her sunny disposition. As in, sunny and, what was it, Casey and the Sunshine Band, is that right? Her death is a reminder that danger may hide in the shadows of exotic dancing other dancers said one of the things that i think about is maybe it was some guy that came in that tipped her heavily and got a little weird on her and maybe she told him to buzz off and he followed her home and did something to her yeah i mean i don't know if it was something like that would be the trigger i mean i'm sure it was definitely Probably somebody from the club. I mean, that's pretty good odds. I don't know if it was somebody who tipped her too much. So you notice how people always put in those extra details in their... I don't... I try not to do that very much. You know, when people give you too much details... Like, for example, the girl that made those 3D animations. You know, the stuff that she puts in there, in her own thoughts is a little too like you know you have no idea if any of that's true at all i mean it's just wild speculation i try to avoid wild speculation so when i make animations i use information that is known and factual to try to explain what i'm doing as a matter of fact the like an affidavit is what's going to direct me to uh come up with what I put in the animation. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess that that you know that same animation was in the Koberger case. Uh, Brian Enton said there was at least like 14 mistakes that he saw in it. So I don't, you know, I mean, I don't really trust what he's saying much either, but uh, I think it should be like that too, right? So when I'm making, and when you do it that way, you can actually spot things that aren't true or something's missing. Kind of like when we I did the one on, Koberger, and then I timed out things, and there's missing 13 or 15 minutes or so early on the trip home after leaving uh, Moscow, Idaho, heading south in that big loop that he does. Well, cool, Patty. Yeah, see, look at, again, look at the title of this one. Stripper slain in home, but no leads to murder. In an apartment building with no secrets. I think we just did that one. Oh, this is the one we just did, right? Does it go all the way over? That looks different, though. Even though it has the same start. I think we already did this one. Good. Or it, had a, it was a similar article, I think. And then I did get an article out of a different newspaper archive website. So let's see what this one says over here. I don't use this one very much, but I re-upped the subscription to it. Let's see. In an apartment building with no secrets, sound, sounds similar. Apparently no one overheard. Is this the same thing? We have a woman murdered in an apartment building that is not soundproof. Yeah, that's the same. God, these guys are crazy. What is this? Some kind of a... Oh, it's an AP story that they're repeating. Weird. And that... See, so doesn't that just show you guys? I don't read these before because I like to go over them with you. It's boring as hell if you've already read every single bit, right? Let's see. In an apartment building with no secrets, apparently no one overheard <laughs> Sandra. You doing it again? Sandra Morgan was found. We have a woman murdered. Da, 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 the question. Oh, man. Is this AP again? Yep. And you put it out the next day. Even. All right. 29th. And then we've got one on October 7th. Hey, wow. Thank you so much, Cadillac. You know what I've noticed is I'm, I'm getting the same number of subs right now as like a norm, like, you know, pretty reasonable getting, but I'm losing more because a lot of the, well, I'll tell you in a second. Thank you, Cadillac. So the thing is I'm getting, you know, like on days when you're not covering a huge case, I used to always get 30, 20, 30 subs every single day, that kind of thing. So it kind of slowly goes around, you know, plods along. But lately, I'd be getting, I still get, I've been getting 30, 40, 50 subs, but I'll lose like 62 or something. You know, like it just keeps dropping. And I think it's because when there's a lot of people that just join your channel for various things like, they only wanted to do the Idaho 4 case. Yeah, no, it's just kind of the way it works. And then they, after a while, they you're, you're, something pops up and they go, oh, that doesn't even, that's nothing to do. And they just unsubscribe because they're, they're not interested. They were just there for the Idaho 4 case. It's kind of frustrating, though, because you have to wait for a while until that kind of fades away, that whole concept. I mean, you can see right here, watch when I show you the, like see at the top right there, we started the show with 106.808, now it's 106.806, and it was actually up to 106.900 just the other day. Like it's just, <laughs> it's weird. 
but I'm still getting the same number that I used to always get even a little bit more to be honest with you on a daily basis the but the net goes down because people you know there's a lot of people that join and they don't watch anything other than the one case that they wanted to watch so I appreciate all of you that are here supporting and here for anything that we're covering all right I really appreciate it I mean uh, we did take a lot of time on the Alec Murdoch case but uh, I thought it was really interesting I'm glad we did that you know? yeah and then some people stay because of the Idaho four stuff like Danielle right there yeah you can say whatever you want here yeah <clears throat> all right let's let me let me go through this one uh, psychiatrist psychologist this is in October so now we're like a month later or not not that long nor like two weeks later let me get to the right screen. The dogs aren't even there anyways. Psychiatrist, psychologists, and a handwriting anal uh, analyst examined crime scene photos and other evidence yesterday in an effort to develop a psychological profile of the person who brutally murdered an exotic dancer in East Liberty two weeks ago. Without being specific, Pittsburgh Police Commander Ronald Freeman of the Investigations Branch said the two-hour session he and Sergeant Paul Merriway had with the six forensic specialists in the East Liberty Branch had produced an analysis that was absolutely helpful. The panel was convened, Freeman said, not only to provide psychological profile of the killer, but we're also looking at possible motives and triggering mechanisms for that type of behavior. We didn't expect anything shocking or surprising. Sometimes we do this to confirm something we already know. Or, you know, it almost feels like they have, feel like it's kind of a serial killer type person the way they're handling this and the wording. The body of Sandra L. Morgan, 26, a dancer at Bear Elegance, a strip district nightclub, was discovered by police at 9 p.m. September 24th in her third floor apartment at 5800 Stanton Avenue. A note was found near her body. Police had been called there by her boyfriend, William Gaston, who said he was worried because she had heart problems and he hadn't heard from her since 7.30 a.m. September 23rd. Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Well, those Reddit people hate Chewbacca. <laughs> That's why I'm going to play it forever. Hey, you found me during the Rodney case. I love all your videos and I appreciate the time you put all your shows together and that you actually make a difference yeah well thank you i think we i think without a doubt this channel makes a massive difference in the true crime world and like i've said before is uh, i think i could just literally i don't know where that video is <laughs> where is that one? Oh, there it is i could sit here and do this and all the money that we give to charity makes a massive difference, right? So that's good. <laughs> that's that's the video I had from a long time ago. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty amazing, right? But I think we also make a difference too, like. We give 
a place if people want to put their voice out there. Uh, we cover cases and we try to do it in an accurate way. I, I think I made a pretty big difference in the public in the Kylie Rodney case. I think there, you know what I find absolutely astonishing is not one news channel ever played the fire camera video and the absolutely irrefutable uh, implications that that video had. Isn't that amazing? Well, I didn't solve the case. I just, uh, there was people showing the bi the fire camera video and going, wow, ooh, maybe that kind of kind of looks like it. And I said, oh, I can do something with this. And I knew immediately that that meant that car went into the water right then at the exact time that the phone died. And it was just a huge moment. And it made a difference. And people were like, oh, wow, yep, there it goes. And then the whole concept of it being some weird, crazy, you know, unless you're a lunatic, still just, no, I got to keep my theory going. Then you look at it differently and go, oh, wait, no, what about that one light? No, nope, when that car went in the water, there wasn't another vehicle. Or anywhere around there, right then. A little bit later there was, a little bit before, yep. All right, anyways, let me get back to this. <clears throat> now, so she had a heart problem, and he hadn't heard from her since 7.30 a.m. September 23rd. Entering through an unlocked apartment door, officers found her face down on her bed. Her throat had been slashed, and she had been stabbed 13 times in the chest and abdomen and once in the back. She had been blindfolded with her bra and gagged with a sock. And remember, she was found with her palms up and she was at the end of the edge of the bed with her feet touching the floor. So likely like her waist area was off the end. Allegheny Corner, Dr. Searle H. Weck, Said the killer tried to strangle Morgan and may have handcuffed and tortured her. A lot of, I mean, a lot of this is repeating, but it's later in different articles, and you know, at least you remember all the facts that way. Freeman said the homicide squad in the past has sought psychological profiles from the FBI Behavioral Science Unit in Quantico. The team profiled in the book and movie, The Silence of the Lambs, but because the unit Profiles cases all over the world, Freeman said, and an in-depth profile sometimes takes weeks or months to complete. Here we're getting instant feedback by using homegrown people, said Freeman. We anticipate using them in the future at the request of the participants. Freeman would not identify them or their affiliations. Freeman said the use of such forensic experts is helpful in cases in which we have ambiguous or conflicting information. It's not unusual to find something at the crime scene that's open to multiple interpretations, so we try to find some sort of consensus, Freeman continued. Behavior reflects personality, so even criminal behavior reflects a suspect's personality. All right, well, there's that one, and I think there's just one more here. This one's November 23rd, about six weeks after that last one. And this is the one, this is exactly what we say all the time. It's just like when we go over the case, the uh, Lum Lumberton, right? I mean, if those were three blonde white girls that were just walking to school and they were found in garbage cans and thrown on the ground that that co that case would be I think it would have been solved already but because they were drug users and you know putting themselves in a risky lifestyle situation it just wasn't a big it's not a big story strange and they they're treated differently and the wording's different yeah 
So here's what this article says. I agree with the members of Sandra Morgan's family who have expressed dismay about the emphasis of her employment and reports of her brutal murder. Almost every mention of her name has been followed or preceded by exotic dancer. It's the same with the recent trial of Norriston in which David Rabinowitz admitted killing his wife. He was having an affair with another woman. It wasn't enough to say that. The case was sensationalized because his affair was with a stripper. Her occupation was mentioned at every opportunity. The very word conjures a wicked lady and makes his crime seem more sensational. His crime, how we view it, should have nothing to do with the other woman's profession. Yeah, they did the same thing in the, um, um, let's see, what was it? The hot car death with, um, you know, well, I forgot his name. He's not a likable guy whatsoever. But they, they brought in all these people that he was with, and it was just like, what does it have to do with anything? It's just so unrelated. They were trying to make him look like a terrible person and it wasn't related to the case in any way, shape, or form. What that wasn't even about motive or anything. It was just What was his name? God. The word I was named doesn't just pop into my head. I I wish that I could I had covered that. Yeah, I would have I mean know a lot of you would have hated me. And wouldn't have liked me at all because I wasn't... Yeah, Justin Ross Harris. There you go. Yeah, I wasn't for the... I think he was absolutely innocent in terms of intentionally... They, they, gave, they got him in prison for malice murder. Like, literally, he intentionally left his son in a hot car and baked him all day. To, and they, they brought in all the girls that he uh, flirted with and... Uh, you know, it's just what it was was people hated his guts for why he got distracted. That's it. And I watched the whole trial. I know exactly what they were doing in there. I thought what the prosecution did, they lied prior. I mean, it made it made the um, the Murdoch prosecution the inf the misinformation they put out prior looked like nothing they put out so much stuff I, I don't know if it is it complete i think he's getting a new trial or something right or they might not try him i think he served enough time he's been in there for four or five years and that was way too long he was already totally suffering for killing his own kid i mean a lot of people women will go i would never do that okay great you're one of those people. But so do all the people it happens to. They say the same thing. You know, and, um, you know, he. There, there should be some neglect or some sort of punishment. But, man, isn't really the punishment that you'll always know that you were responsible for taking the life? Uh, you know, like not taking the life, but just having a weird moment where you didn't remember something. So that's, uh, that's how I look at that one. Anyways. She was only five, but uh, this is a different one. But Jean Benet Ramsey's name cannot be mentioned without Little Beauty Queen accompanying it. She was first and foremost a little girl who was murdered. We still don't know why, and Sandra was a young mother who was murdered. We still don't know why. Unlike Jean Benet, Sandra was old enough to make her own choices. I suppose she could have been doing better things than dancing at bare elegance she also could have been doing worse bare elegance where sandra dance has been the middle of a fight with lawrenceville neighbors since it opened and more recently it has been close to closing its doors sadly children are being murdered every day but they don't grab the headlines not like jean benet and not like sandra Sandra would probably be another statistic, just another homicide, not a headline with accompanying photos of her place of employment had she not been a stripper. 
a less attractive woman found dead in her apartment who might have worked at Walmart would have had her death reported, but there would be none of this reflection on what she did for a living. Yeah, I sort of agree with that, but I don't know. I think, it, I don't know about that. Certainly, I wouldn't advise a young girl to take off her clothes and dance for a crowd of men. It's risky, but it doesn't automatically make the dancer dancers bad people. I wouldn't want my daughter to bump and grind on the club circuit, nor would I paint and parade my five-year-old in beauty contests, but many mothers do. We all make choices in this life. Making choices for our children, however, should be done carefully. The Sandra Morgan story is particular. Go, uh, got, let's see, got to me because a few months ago I went to Bear Elegance, my first visit to a strip club for an innocent, although offbeat, column. What goes on there? That was my question. Uh, is it evil? Is it bizarre? Does it offer an opportunity for a young girl to pay her way through college as bartending often does for boys? I wanted to know, so I went. Lawrenceville residents and others infer that it is a place ripe for gangsters, mafia connections, prostitution, generally a bad influence. I don't take sides. I left a bit embarrassed with no sense of moral outrage. I met a few of the dancers. They all danced under names other than their real name. I believe Sandra danced as KC. We've been told the strippers, now the stripper who turned Rabinowitz's head was billed as summer. I don't like the fact that such clubs exist or that women put themselves on stage in a somewhat demeaning manner for others to ogle. But I do know it is reality. The girls I met this particular afternoon had no idea why I was there. I did not meet Casey that day, but I met some girls who just had to like and I, let's see, I met some girls who just had to like and I prefer to think she was very much like them. I met some girls you just had, oh, you just had to like, like, you had to like them. If you met them, you would have liked them. Our waitress is her, uh, her, our waitress in her brief little outfit was a stunning girl who was working there to pay her tuition for law school. So far, we don't know if Sandra's job had anything to do with her terrible end, but we do know young women who were secretaries, department store employees, nurses, housewives, and mothers who also have been murder victims. What they did or didn't do for a living seems of very little importance to the people who love them and they're gone. Yep, yep, yep. I agree with that. In Oregon here, it's like <laughs> the strip places here are pretty much full nudity places. I don't even think they have any, any others, you know. It's crazy. Yeah, well, they're getting pretty close. I think one of the things, I think uh, in the, just, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the numbers are now, but I think the pay for women in sort of not the highest levels are just the same as guys. But if you get to the highest levels, then all of a sudden you'll get these guy, you know, these CEOs that make like a $50 million a year. What a joke, really? And I think that's kind of skews a lot of stuff. I think people are so, they try so hard now to make sure, and it should have, should have been like that all the time. Don't you think? I think my mom actually, uh, what was it? She was working at U.S. Bank, and she was an appraiser. Remember how I said she went to night school? We don't have an hourly rate here, really. I mean, 
when we were talking about income, it's salaries and shit like that. And the hourly rate can be anywhere from like eight to fifteen. You know, so states like Washington, it seems like Oregon are like fifteen. But my mom worked at U.S. Bank, and she went to night school to become an appraiser. And she became an appraiser, and when she she was so good that they made her uh, an appraiser for like. Uh, commercial properties like she was going around doing that but she was paid half of what the men doing the same job got paid so I think she did some sort of a was putting together a law like a class action lawsuit or something and then they settled they actually paid her back what she should have got paid and I think I, I mean I think back then it was like 1970 what, four or something, and she took the money. I think she got only like $20,000 or something, and she designed and bought a piece of property and built an entire house because that's all it cost back then. <laughs> but, but she designed the house all by herself using her appraisal skills, and um, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then somebody stole her designs because it was such a unique, great w use of a small piece of property. But anyways... You know, that's the story right there. Yeah, I think whatever you're... Like, here's one of the things I don't agree with. Like, for example, um, the, like the women's basketball, right? And then there's men's basketball. Well, I mean, men's basketball is, you know, f way higher level skills. And people watch those i mean women are really good basketball players they have the team basketball and they can score but there's this whole outrage at how they don't get paid the same amount of money as the guys does that make sense to any of you i mean what do you what are you outraged about if you had 40 you know thirty thousand people at your games paying a hundred dollars a ticket and everybody was tuning in you would be making that kind of money it's just like in um I, I guarantee it that gymnastics, for example, is a huge sport for some people. Like, it's really popular. It's always on television. Nobody's there to watch the guys do the rings and everything, right? So if there was actually salary being paid, the women would kick ass. And it's the same thing in soccer over here. They're like, God, the women, we should, we should get the same pay. Well, it's an entertainment, right? So should all actors get paid the same amount of money? Like even just some um, actor on the side who isn't really doing anything, should he get the same amount of money? For me, it's just common sense, logical, and it makes sense. Now, if the NBA wants to have their players take less money so that you can give more monies to money to the female NBA uh, players so that they can, or AB, whatever you want to call it, I think it's WNBA, then awesome, good for you, right? But there's no, you can't invent money out of the air. People aren't watching those very much. Now, maybe in the future they will. I know people love watching women's uh, soccer, U.S. soccer, for sure. So, you know, good for them. You know, that's where they should be getting paid more. I don't know. I mean, is there even an argument on the other way? I mean, I don't really get that part. I understand it in the corporate world. It's not fair if somebody doing the same job doesn't get paid the same. But in the uh, entertainment world, it makes no sense at all that people are complaining that they don't have the same salaries as an NBA player. I mean, there's players in the NBA whose salary are greater than pretty much the entire WNBA's income. <laughs> you know, it's, and if more people watch, then yes, you would. Anyways, you, you get what I'm saying. I, I really don't understand it. Anyways, man, what a brutal case to not have solved. You'd almost think they would have to have DNA in that case with all the stuff going on in there. I wonder if they'd answer.
Maybe I'll try getting a hold of them. See what's going on over there. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know, Cindy. Uh, man, I'll, let me. I'm gonna pause the whole show until you get back, man. I, I don't think we can run it without you. I gotta hit the show. Gray, I have to take a quick break. I'll be right back. All right, let me, because I I always um, hang on every word that you say in the chat. So I'm gonna definitely wait because I won't be able to continue. Where's what music from? Yeah. But, I mean, that is the what you're doing, Zozo, is owning the business. If you were one of the truck drivers, wouldn't you get the same pay as another guy, a guy doing a truck driver? Oh, I don't know. The avocado music was a long time ago. It was from... It's just, it's from OBS. It's just something they had over there. You just click on it. I know, but you own it, so what do you mean do the same role? <laughs> I don't really get it. I mean, being an owner for another business? I mean, then you would own it again. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, when women want the same pay for doing not the same work, yeah, well, I think there should be more, you know, if, what, if, if you're doing the same work as somebody else, you, you should get paid as long as you've been doing it the same amount of time too, right? So like if somebody's been a CEO for 20 years and they're making $8 million and you just take over their position and you get four, does that mean you were underpaid or does that mean let's wait for you to get there 20 years and maybe you'll be at eight, right? But I'm sure that's part of the numbers. Yeah, I like watching. I watch every time when the women soccer team plays. Yeah, I mean... They should, you know, and if that means that a lot of people are watching it, then they should get paid based on the information that's out there, right? The uh, the watching share, you know how they give you the numbers, like the Nielsen ratings or whatever, your rating. So if it's high and they're able to sell ads, then boom, you get paid. That's how it works. But money just doesn't just show up. No, I, I can't stand Rapino. I think she's a, absolutely one of the worst people that's ever lived. She's a terrible human. But that's my opinion, okay? I can't stand her. Uh, the U.S. women's team could probably beat... No, they couldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't even be close. It would be 50 to 0 at the end. I mean, literally, uh, they would just run circle. They probably, I bet the, the men's, U.S. men's team played the women. The score would probably be 35 nothing at the end of the game, just conservatively. It's just like basketball. If you take the best women's WNBA team and played it against uh, the worst NBA team, the score would be probably like 200 and... 10 to 35 or something. Maybe maybe 40 because they'd get some, you know, some three-pointers off. Maybe, hell, let's just say 50. Because um, every college team can beat, every college men's team can beat every single WNBA team. Well, not every college team because, you know, the low levels, but every W. <laughs> NCAA Coliseum. And doesn't everybody just kind of know that? I mean, 
the the athletic ability when you got somebody that's seven two that can jump up and dunk. How would any player in the WNBA get the be able to lay the ball in or anything around the rim? Yeah, I just hate how it's just like everybody just doesn't see it, and he, and if you don't say it exactly right, everybody gets angry. You know, uh, I tell you what, gymnastics. Uh, that's a sport where guys can't do those things. They'll become neutered. You know, like if you're you going to do the un uneven bars, for example, <laughs> that might hurt, you know. Uh, balance beam, forget it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure what I'm saying offends people, but it shouldn't. That's the thing is it shouldn't. It's just sort of the reality of the world. And maybe someday, I'm, I, I think if you, can, if you made an all-star team of WNBA players, they might be able to hang in a game with sort of a mid, like a, like a college, maybe a mid-level men's basketball team. They'd probably be hang in the game, have a good game, because women are way more um, fundamentally sound. Like when you watch them play, they do all the pick and rolls and the cuts, team basketball a little bit better. Where guys is kind of one on one a lot of times. Like they'll have everybody clear out and they start doing their little moving around, and it's just. So sometimes I wish NBA players would play like the WNBA. Because it's better brand of basketball in terms of team play, but it's not as fun to watch whatsoever. You know, and I think that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the NBA is Europeans when they come here now are better basketball players, IQ wise. They know how to pass and because like, they play team basketball over there. Over here, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one sport, and that's why the Europeans have really started to, you know, uh, in the Olympics and so forth. They're in the games, and they almost beat us a lot. Yeah, I mean, the I think the best player in the NBA right now is Luka Doncic. I mean, he is absolutely in insane. I mean, the stuff he does. He's like Larry Bird, like a uh, maybe a better, I don't know. It's kind of different, though, too. He's, I was going to say Larry Bird. but Yeah, Jokic is good, really good, yeah. He's, he's, he's really a good passer, and he's tall. And really good outlet passer, passer all around, can shoot three pointers, just everything's good Jokic, you know. But I think Doncic is the best all around well not all around, best offensive player. He's just so you know, he's not really good at defense. So maybe Jokic is maybe better, I don't know. Alright, do you anyways you guys wanna do the uh, newspapers dot com? At this point, or what do you guys think? It's the super chat newspapers.com where you you try to find with your wording. So now, before we do it, and I'm only going to be reading the ones. So the way you do it is uh, you're looking, you've got to word it the way that it, it would be written instead of coming up with these crazy, f fantastical, shitty, you know, it's like, what? I mean, think about if you're reading an article, if the phrase was in there, right? So uh, we're trying to find maybe... A serial killer victim, but don't go. Oh yeah, I know where this one is. So let me word it. Yeah, Milwaukee. Uh, you know, give me a break. I'm looking for something that you don't know what it is. Okay, 
You're trying to find the name, uh, a, a case like that. All right, so what you do is you type in the, do a super chat and you type in the, uh, and also obviously it's to help raise the funds for the channel and thus allow me to donate again over, I donate over 50% of the net revenue, so. And we're gonna be giving money, I think, I think uh, next few days I'll do send some money into the uh, Wounded Warriors. Got to add them on there, even though it's not really a crime thing. I think of them like the same as police, and yeah, you know, got their life on the line every day. Well, there you go, you guys. It's right there. It's ready to go. Boldly hammer, huh? What's a boldly hammer? <laughs> boldly hammer, is that a... Oh, bloody. Oh, okay. Bloody. <laughs> See, I don't know girl code, man. I could have figured it out. Okay, so what, when you said behind house, was that something that you just thought of, or, or do you have something, a case that you remember? Because I don't want to, don't think of a case and then try to get me to find Holy it. Hammer found behind house. Haven't we done the one body f found stuffed inside tree before? We've even covered a case with that. Now this is 1855. Tree. Bloody hammer found behind how? No. Well, no. How about in backyard? Bloody hammer found in backyard. And I don't know if you, oh wait, one dead, two hurt, and hammer attack. After a day of searching on Wednesday, Long uh, Lavelle, this is back in 2015, a 30, let's see, attack that left a 19-year-old man dead and two others injured. A 34-year-old suspect was arrested Thursday evening. Um, now it says bloody hammer right there. And by the way, you guys, like I've said before on here, any you guys can be whatever you want to be in your life. But there are some things Stephanie you likely can't be, eyes. like an NBA basketball player, and I can't be a, a, like a women's gym, gymnast, and those kind of things. So I don't want you to think like, oh, God, you know. What I'm just saying is, is that whole money thing about sports just drives me nuts. Okay, it's uh, who's ever... Figure skating. Do you think people tune in to watch the guys, by the way? No. <laughs> I mean, so the women in figure skating should make way more money than the guys. All right. Uh, I don't think there's uh, one in the hammer in the backyard. That one doesn't seem to pop up anything. So Eugenie, body found stuffed inside tree. Let's see. And it might be the word stuffed. But Here, let me say body found inside tree. Yes. I, I bet you I can go like that, and that one will pop up. Well, there, there's one right there. 2004 in Texas. A maintenance worker trying to figure out what was causing a foul odor discovered the decomposed body of a man inside a hollow tree trunk the jefferson county medical examiner's office was expected to perform an autopsy saturday on an unidentified man the man 
has been there for more than several days. The body was found Friday afternoon near Christus Street. wonder how that person got in there. Yeah, look at this one. This is Vernon, Ohio. An unemployed tree trimmer arrested after a teenage girl was found bound and gagged in his basement. Oh, I think this is one that we covered. Pointed the way Thursday. Oh, yeah. This is the one. This is the one that we covered. Remember that? This is the one. An unemployed tree trimmer arrested after a teenager was found bound and gagged in, in his basement pointed the way Thursday to the bodies of her brother, mother, and another woman stuffed into um, beige bags and hidden in a hollow tree, authority said. Yeah, we definitely did this one. You guys remember that one? That was crazy. Yeah. The three victims and the rescued 13-year-old disappeared more than a week ago from a blood-spattered home. Authorities said all three were murdered there, though they did not say how. Yeah, that was like, we did that one like three or four years ago. Good one there, Eugene. Oh, you don't remember that one? Yeah, it was, I remember, I remember the house. It was right on the corner of a street, and then apparently maybe they think the guy was watching and it was something like she went into the house, was listening to the radio or records or something. And then the other one, a friend came by, knocked, didn't see anything or something. Yeah, it was it was kind of weird. I don't remember the exact examples of it. But. All right, and then murder at the state fair. Well, let me let me just get this name of this case. And who are the victims? Huh. Sean, what was his name? They didn't give any names. Well, if you want to look it up, it's 2010, November 19th is the article, and it's in Mount Vernon, Ohio. If you give me the name of a victim in that case, then I can go ahead and uh, look it up on Google Earth because I have all those names in there. All right, so then Plato stabbed with an ice pick in heart and eyes. <laughs> okay. Man stabbed with ice pick maybe out within the next few days. No. Stabbed with ice pick. Eyes and heart stab with ice pick. I'll give you I'll give one There's extra shot chance for you there. Best. Stabs his neighbor with an ice pick. John Harmon, twenty seven year old, was stabbed with an ice pick and injured seriously last night. Harmon was stabbed under the heart. Uh, well, there you go. That was close enough. It was it was close, Plato. Wasn't really, you know, can't give that a hundred percent or anything. I think Drazen Petrovic was a. I don't know. I don't even know when. Oh, best pure shooter before Curry, Reg, Reggie Miller, Gray. <laughs> I was a pretty good shooter myself. All right, let me go to uh, Cindy. Deceased was found without fingernails. All right, how about you know, body? How about just body found? They don't use the words like that. They don't talk like that. Body found without fingernails. Oh, wait. oops, I gotta get out. That wasn't the search.
not alone the fingernail marks on the throat made the conclusion the only plausible one. The cause of Blanche Lamont's death. The fingernail marks. Hmm. I bet that's pretty interesting. 1895, though. It's not what you typed in, though. It's just a trial. And what about this one? 1881. I guess they liked fingernails back then. How about uh, fingernails were missing? There we go. Bizarre tale, missing nails, stolen audio. She would not comment on her son's report to police, but said just some of his fingernails were missing. Hmm. Exact vengeance on supposed Palestinian. Four fingernails were missing. So they took tortured people by taking their fingernail. Police last week said the boy's fingernails were missing. Vital said the boy had a history of biting his nails and may have been in so much pain from his stomach injuries that he bit them until they bled. Yeah, I don't know that one. But. Body found in peculiar position. All right. Don't worry, I'll catch up with them all, you guys. Body found in peculiar position. <clears throat> Man killed with axe in Texas. Now ah, look at that. It actually shows up what Adnoram typed in. <laughs> uh, let's see. H. Stewart. This is 1911. Fort Myers. A member of the distinguished English family and a man of considerable wealth met death here in a mysterious manner several days ago. His body being found today just off the railway docks in about 10 feet of water when found the body was in an upright position. But it says right here, body is found against some piling. The general belief is that he fell overboard while having an epileptic fit. He came to Fort Myers about six years ago from South Africa, where he had been employed by the British government as an interpreter. He was a member of the Khorishan Unity of something or other. Let's see if there's any, any other one. This is 1912. Fine body sitting on floor. It is thought he died of Apopyxy, body found in peculiar position. Winnie Wirtz aged about 55 years. A cigar, mar cigar maker was found dead shortly before noon today in his room at National Hotel in Calhoun. Uh, when discovered by the police and coroner, Cruz Wirtz's body was sitting on the floor fully dressed and his overcoat with a chair drawn up in front of him. Uh, the body was removed to the huh, coroner cruise after examination stated that the cause of death probably was apoplexy. The man's neck seemed to be diseased. Coroner Cruz will hold an inquest at the Peltier Morgue that, this afternoon. The manner in which he got into the peculiar position in which the body was found cannot be determined. Body was removed, was sitting on the floor, fully dressed, and in his overcoat with a chair drawn up in front of him. Huh. Well, that's kind of weird. And then Zozo, 
dismembered body with eyes gouged out. You, don't you give me that one every single time? Like, like every single time we do the show, you give me the same. <laughs> you give me the same one every single time. It's unreal. Let's see. Body was dismembered. Um, eyes missing. Something like that. Finding a body of uh, the dismembered body doesn't have eyes in there. Move body not missing teacher. Let's see. Um, victim had their eyes gouged out. Senate to apologize for failing to enact anti. Oh, that's a. Uh, hmm. Had their eyes gouged out or their teeth pulled with pliers. Yeah, I don't see any combinations there. Well, gave it a shot. Gave it a shot. So you got to think of how an article would word something. So Jim Lawn. Ham hands. <laughs> well, I don't even know what that means. By sliding the forks, ham hands, under the shoulder. I don't even know what ham hands it, it means. Ham hands, remembered as quiet leader. No, I, I tried. I don't know what that one means. And I'm way behind you guys because I had to go back up and. Thank you, Lisa Valenzuela. All right, this one is murder at the state fair. Murder at the state fair. Des Moines Register reporter Kathy Bolton and Grant Rogers and photographer Brian Powers spent nearly three months reporting, writing, and photographing the series Murder... Oh, it's a series. Yeah. Maybe typed in... Yeah. State Fair. I don't know how to word that one. What do you think? Well, we have to move on to another one. There wasn't really any... It's like a show on television. Body found in the wall. Yeah, well, we got... Those are many... There's cases out there. Yeah, this is one I was thinking about. Yeah, that case right there. Police call women's death a targeted act. Clues increasingly point to an inside job yesterday in the slang of a Yale graduate student. And that was another student who um, attacked her and then put her body inside the wall there. And you, they, they catch them on surveillance footage. Let's see if there's another one. Body found behind wall, the body of Mrs. Anna Lewis, 70, who vanished mysteriously a month ago, was found sealed behind a wall in a bedroom of her Highland Park home.
Well, is this part one? What is this? Where is this? Oh, there it is. The body of Mrs. Anna Lewis, 70, who vanished mysteriously a month ago, was found sealed behind a wall in a bedroom of her Highland Park home Thursday. The discovery touched off a hunt for Joseph J. Lewis, 72-year-old carpenter, abducted and tortured to death, who had been her husband for 42 years. Detectives said Lewis passed a lie detector test on Wednesday, insisting he had not seen his wife since last June when she left to visit a sister. Oh, come on, really? Well, we now know that she didn't leave to visit a sister, so you must have made that up. He was not present Thursday when Ray Pinker, police crime laboratory chief, went to the house at 2630 Johnson Street with... Well, what's, what happened to this lady? Murder of Ann Lewis. Body dumped in zoo. This is old, though. In a wall. The murder of Annie Lou occurred in September. No, yeah, while she was working, and that's different. It's like 10 years old. God. Hmm. Coroner's men said that an autopsy will, will be necessary to determine the cause of death. This is 1963. I wasn't even born yet. And where is this? This is in um, Los Angeles. September. I don't know, was it A-N-N-E, Lewis? I don't remember if it had an E or not. Ah, crap. Yeah, Anna Lewis, okay. Let's try it. Anna Lewis. 1963, California. Oh, Lewis. Ah, screw it. I, I don't know what happened to her. <laughs> I think, I mean, that has to be a homicide. If she was supposed to be on a trip, but she's inside of the wall. Really? Yeah, that doesn't just happen. Uh, Mark Price was a pretty good shooter. D and K wreck. He was before then. John, there were a whole bunch of really great peer shooters. A lot more of them back then. Angela Gallagher said, man killed with axe in Texas. But I, I didn't miss anybody, right? Yeah. No, oh, in Texas. That doesn't go there. Nineteen fifty one. Man killed by axe hurled from flywheel. Gordon Russell Robertson, forty nine, was killed yesterday when he dropped an axe into a flywheel. And it was hurled back at him. The axe struck him in the stomach. Robertson, a sawmill employee, had been attempting to dislodge a log jammed in the machine. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. 
An aged Loretta man was near death today while officers sought the unknown assailant was struck uh, the 70 year old man in the head with an axe. The man Alvin Thormeyer was found sprawled on his back at the small farm five miles south. Hey, by the way, do any of you guys watch that? I think it was on Netflix documentary of that kid who like hit somebody head with an axe and everybody thought he was his hero, but he wasn't. Oh, is it Sarah Maynard? Okay. Let me see if I have that. Hold on a second. Oh. Maynard. Huh. I don't see it in here. There was a time. I did lose a bunch of stuff at one point, so. Yeah, we definitely covered that. I remember doing the show. Man killed with axe in Texas. Yeah, we got that. Welcome. Butter Gaming for Life. And what do we got? Well, I think the, that's about it, right, you guys? <laughs> Axe wielding guy wasn't so mellow after all. Yeah, that guy was just. You try to make it seem like. Did I thought? I mean, I don't know how anybody believed in that guy. What a load of shit! That man. There's a lot of gullible people. I don't see the two more. Oh, Adnoram. Oh, you put another one? No. I didn't see that. Abducted and tortured to death. What did that one person even mean? Well, that one should have something. I mean, that's so basic. I mean, what happened to all the... Man tortured to death with his left eyeball hanging out. Yeah. No. Abducted and tortured to death. See, those, are, those usually end in something. This is uh, 1980. 89 words of condemnation won't stop child torture I'd rather do on a, an adult or something video shows Italian who was tortured to death in Egypt taken weeks before he was abducted and tortured to death yes probably ISIS or something Words of condemnation. Once no, we already did that one. Hmm. Yeah, see, those don't really lead to you know, like criminal, I mean, they're criminal, but more like, a lot of them are international. It's too generic. <laughs> you went from really specific to really generic. Uh, let's see, the other one is body dumped in zoo. Like if you said something like, if you type in a woman's nude body or abducted, the abducted body of a woman was found, and what was it? Uh, and she was tortured to death, something like that. It might lead to something. Zoo kept alligator mutilated. Zoo kept alligator mutilated. Huh? Right? 
two supervisors Sally wait beer drinking assailants dragged a 13 foot alligator named Freddy from its home and they oh it's the alligator that was the body that was found smothering yeah well you're it, it was too generic abducted and tortured to death let me try that let me try my idea um, Fifty nine. Uh, no, that's Kuwait again. Well, I gave it a shot, Zozo. Here. Gotta do better, man. Gotta do better. <laughs> uh, what was the, the other one? Um, but when, the next one <coughs> is Jim Lawn smu smothering by stuffed animal. <laughs> okay, so that would probably be smothered to death with a stuffed or stuffed animal. Stabbed to death with a knitting needle. Mental health expert will assist in defense. Uh, a medical examiner testified February 2nd hearing in Bedford Juvenile and Domestic Relation Court. The cause of death was suffocation. Prosecutor's evidence argues wit smothered the boy to death with a stuffed animal. Wow, you actually had one there, Jim Lawn. Look at that. And that's the case of Shanna Marie Witt, the killer. All right, you had one, Jim. Nomad beats, let's see, no, yeah, Jim Lawn, then Nomad beats, stabbed to death with a knitting needle. Is that what they're called? All right, do you knit nomad beads? Sorted tail from 70s surface in trendy Dublin. Right here, stabbed to death with a knitting needle. Woman alleges abuse slaying of child by mother. A woman who claims to have given birth to that child came forward in 1995 and told police a sordid tale. She said that from a young age, she was sexually abused by her father and brother and that one of them was probably the father of her... Isn't this the one that we covered? That crazy one with the pig pens or... Pig pins? Pens? Uh, she said the newborn had been taken away from her and stabbed to death with a knitting needle by her mother to hide the scandal. Well, it sort of sounded similar. I don't think that's it. She said that the uh, she said that she gave birth to a second child three years later, and that it was stillborn and buried in the family backyard. The body of a newborn baby girl wrapped in a newspaper was found in 1973 in an alley in the neighboring town of uh, Dunlega, I don't even, I can't even pronounce it. Police say the child had been stabbed with a knitting needle 
and scissors at the time and inquest was open but quickly closed for lack of evidence well there you go you had one there nomad beads crazy yeah but usually if you're trying to find like a serial killer in here you would do something like let's see like I mean what, what are the things that serial killers do typically like sometimes right like you might say there are some of them do the dismembering thing so you would say um, and especially if it's a female right so if you find like a woman's um, dismembered body and then you say like you know, 1965 to 1990 and you hit enter there uh, I didn't spell it right so that's why it didn't work there's an M in there and when you do that it pops up with these crazy you know suspect American Ripper see I mean that's one right there right um, just the same guy two women found murdered a woman's body was found in a plastic bag late Sunday on the shore of St. Lawrence River at nearby uh, Beauport three miles from where another woman's dismembered body was found Friday police said police said the second body was tied with rope a 20 pound weight found nearby had apparently been used to sink the body see See how it's different? Like, I mean, you have to just sort of think about how it would be worded. Uh, this one, Sweetwater mutilation murder not linked to other three in the area. A badly decomposed and dismembered body, the fourth in South Florida. Police are withholding the identity of the victim, a 51-year-old woman, until the next of kin can be notified. Police responded to the firearms call, found the woman's dismembered body stuffed in a 30-gallon plastic garbage can. Serial oh. killer burying bodies in garden. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna give that one shot, Nikki Zubs. I'm gonna, I'll type it in. I'll put the quotes on the side like that. Didn't even nothing in there. How about just killer burying bodies in garden? Don't see it, Nikki Zubs. Don't see it. Yeah, well, that's not what she asked for, Cindy. I, I know what I'm doing. Uh, family found in barrels. I could try that. Wife of millionaire in Wrigley family found in concrete barrel. There's one. But the barrel one is what mob people did all the time, so it's really common. Kills and uses bodies like dolls like the human dollhouse. Saw a criminal minds like that. Don't know how to word this, but someone that kills and uses bodies like dolls, like a human dollhouse. I saw that one. Um, I don't know. I don't. You don't really hear of those too often, but I mean, I could try to do. Let's see. Yeah, but I bet if I typed in another body found in forest preserve. Um, hmm. I don't know. 
I don't really know how to word something like that. I mean, bodies are posed. Maybe you could say, bodies posed like dolls. Is that going to work? Let me put the quotes on that. Probably none. Yeah. No. Can't find that one, Nikki Zubes. Diana Suzy. <laughs> another bad <laughs> another body found in Forest Preserve. Alright, let's see. Uh, 1986 doesn't mention any body a body of water in that one a man found murdered let's see what this one is 1973 a man found murdered in the something brown forest preserve in Elk Grove Township the shotgun shells may not be connected with the case according to Earl Lundquist doesn't this doesn't sound like it's connect like multiple bodies? How about bodies? A uh, fisherman found the body of a young woman Sunday afternoon in the Horsetail Slough Forest Preserve at 123. The woman apparently died of multiple stab wounds. According to Dave Andre, spokesman for the Cook County Sheriff's Department, the body, which police speculate had been in the forest preserve for more than a day, was found about 3.30. The woman was described as being between 15 and 25 years old and 5 feet 4, with a thin bill, blue eyes, and strawberry blonde hair. She was found wearing a waist-length ski jacket with detachable sleeves, a multicolored turtleneck sweater, designer jeans, white socks, and brown suede ankle boots. She was also wearing a star-shaped uh, metal earrings. So where, where did this take place? Let me, I'm going to look this, try to find something more about this one. This is in uh, <clears throat> Horse Tail Slough Forest Preserve Body. Okay. And this is uh, 19, March 1981 in. Chicago, Illinois. You. That was March 23rd, and that was one on March 24th. The body of the girl found by fishermen was identified Monday as Don Niles, 15 of 1012 Newberry Avenue. The body was, uh, was identified by her stepfather, Charles L. McCullough, who told investigators she had not been seen since she left for school the morning of March 17th. All right, so let's, let's see if there's right away an answer here. Murder of Don Niles. That's gonna be just one of those. There it is. The 1981 murder of deaf and mute teenager Don Niles. On St. Patrick's Day 1981, fishermen found the body of 15-year-old Don Niles in a forest res reserve in suburban Chicago. Decades later, the police arrested her boyfriend and charged him with murder. 
Don Niles was born deaf and mute in 1965. By 1981, she had grown into a beautiful, happy, and feisty 15-year-old. Niles resided with her family at 1012 Newberry Avenue in LaGrange Park, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. She attended the hearing impaired program at Hinsdale High School in nearby Darien, where she was a member of the school's deaf drama club. Niles had been a, in a relationship with a fellow deaf student, Gary Albert, 18, for several months. This is a little bit like uh, that one case that we, what's her name? Uh, ah, shoot, it's one of my, uh, what, what the hell? My brain's not working right now. Hey, thanks, Cadillac. Very cool, he gave memberships to Elaine, Double Dried Hop. Harpy Marble, James James, and Sean Pellegrino. On March 17, 1981, Niles left school at 3 p.m. and was last seen getting into Albert's car. When she did not return home that night, her mother reported her missing to the police on March 18th. Yeah, it's in the, uh, what was it? Uh, Nefarious. It was one of those videos. Remember the lady that was deaf and working and that case is crazy that's definitely one that it needs to be <clears throat> we've talked about it before but might want to we might do another we maybe should do another show on that one again soon after she discovered she was there oh wait there he goes like here, here's the answer so niles had been in a relationship with fellow deaf student gary albert 18 Soon after, uh, and then it says, for several months before they broke up in February. Soon after, she discovered she was three months pregnant with his child. Albert was not happy about the pregnancy and was already in a relationship with another girl. So this is just like um, Angie, you know, Angela. I think, yeah, what's her last name? Man, things aren't popping. I needed an apple earlier, so my... Remember how she was pregnant and he was seeing somebody else at the, um, what was it, a Pizza Hut? Several days later, fishermen found Niles' fully clothed body lying in the underbrush just off the bridal path uh, in the Horsetail Lake Forest Preserve. Don's stepfather, Charles McCullough, identified her body and autopsy revealed she had been stabbed 34 times and did not bear any defensive wounds. Police never found the murder weapon. So that's her right there. Don Niles and Gary Albert. Psycho. Jeez. Yeah, Angela Freeman, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny as I was looking right above and I see someone named Morgan. I was like, Morgan Freeman? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, so he got arrested way later. I wonder how they did that. Investigators had. The fluid test, and, okay, Dr. Kirscher, now deceased, was a Cook County Deputy Medical Examiner performed Niles' autopsy. According to court records, he had preserved a seminal fluid sample on a vaginal swab. Right, but I mean, it seemed like you could explain that, like they were dating at one point, but what, he, he assaulted her and he killed her, even though he killed her because she's pregnant and he's seeing somebody else? That kind of doesn't make any sense, does it? On March 15, 2008, Jim Albert's father posted a $100,000 bond to get his son out of jail. Our Stephen Pulichek, who represented Albert in his divorce, was one of his defense attorneys at trial. Now, I guess it's kind of a long story. I was just kind of wanted to see what happened to her. All right, any more up there? Okay, that was it. Yeah. 
All right, guys. Well, we got through some. We did some Brian Koberger uh, items, that ones that we could determine what the hell was said. The we did the Dylan rounds, so that people who hadn't heard of it kind of know how that case was going, and you know all the different elements that came out from before that are proven, and. Then after that, we covered the case of Sandra Lee Morgan, who was in, uh, I think it was in, was it, uh, let me see what the location was. It was Pittsburgh. I was thinking Philadelphia for some reason. So it was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1997. She was an exotic dancer, which is just how they refer to it in the stories <laughs> I mean, now, now it's like now you almost have to um, but she was a, a woman who was at her hotel or not her hotel or her her apartment and on the third floor we showed it earlier and somebody came in there and stabbed her I think it says 13 times in the stomach one in the back then uh, her body was oh, then she had a bra Covering her eyes, one uh, a sock in her mouth is a gag. Her hands and wrists were bound at one point, and her body was found with her hands face up, and likely her body right at the edge of the bed where her waist is off and her feet were touching the ground. And. The door was unlocked, and they've never made an arrest in that case. It's nuts. Absolutely crazy. So maybe somebody that she knew, or maybe she's one of those people that when you get a knock on your door, you just open the door. Some people do that. We don't. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, what the, what this article he's talking about this article here it doesn't make much sense. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean the Dylan Rounds case was sort of interesting, but it was never really. It, it, you know, the the sensationalistic minds of people on social media made it interesting for people who allow their minds to wander around into crazy areas. But for me, it was just kind of like, yeah, he, I mean, if you go back and listen, it's, he made it to dropping off the seeds and he disappeared. So that's where something happened to him right then. He never made it back. So something happened to him right then. And that's what happened. We, we never knew what happened to him, but now we know that James Brenner. I almost accidentally say Renner every single time. <laughs> Poor James Renner. Were you guys still here? I know it wasn't the bells and whistles nights, but uh, you guys are... It's so slow in the chat. It's just barely moving. We're, I'm just listening, Gray. I'm just listening. Nah, it's just people's minds wander, ramble on. That's the truth. It, it, people don't need to release information about the squatters. That's none of our business, you know. They know what they were doing. We don't need to know. So what it is, is that's when you slow down and you quit covering it at that point because law enforcement is working on it the FBI is working on it they're putting out what we need to know at first we're trying to look for clues and whatnot and then we got the information and that's it see the problem is is people I mean I, I've never seen I mean I've seen <laughs> many cases like that 
But the crazy, think it back in your mind of the nutty, wacky crap people were saying in the Dylan Rounds case. Oh, he's in a, he's in a, a gay relationship with this guy in town and there's some weird, you know, it's just, come on. Thank you Unbelievable. You do, Gray. I enjoy your content. Thank you at Catalic for the gift membership. I love this channel and I love Gray's humor. Oh yeah, cool. Well, thanks. Thanks, Elaine. I mean, I, I, I heard like a hundred different theories. Remember the whole one where, oh yeah, they were at this compound and this guy was... Wow. And it's not like that at all. It's really simple. It's a simple story. Something happened like he was, for some reason, James Brenner was mad, upset. And when Dylan was out there, he confronted him, killed him, and disposed of his body somewhere. I mean, isn't that really pretty much, I mean, maybe it's more complex than that, but that's what it's going to be, something like that. Yeah, but why would they put out pertinent information about their suspects? I mean, we have no... I mean, people sleuth around and try to find stuff. But why would law enforcement tell us information about their suspects? <laughs> you know? It's like... That doesn't make any sense. Super sleuths. I'm trying to find the video that I was telling you guys about. You guys should go watch the video that I made. Yeah, there is nefarious. Ah, oh, shoot. Not sure how to get to my under the nefarious playlist. Not sure how to get to my under the. That's me speaking again. I'm watching myself. Hold on. Oh yeah, it's called. Um, oh yeah, Tina Marie Losser. That's the one I was thinking about. She was a. Uh, she was deaf, and if you go, it was about two months ago under my videos, if you scroll back a little bit and watch that, it's, you know, it's in the same playlist as Leota Camp, but uh, the Tina Losser one is pretty wild. Now, where her shoes were found, and then she almost was, seemed to made to carry a weighted cinder block out into the water, and and then she ended up floating to the surface after a while. Probably likely her uh, ex or, or her husband, I can't remember if they got divorced and were back together again or how that was working. But uh -huh. Yeah, they're almost all way more simple. All right, so thank you to Ashy Snow, Kay Newton, and by the way, if anybody wants a, the notebook for 25 with the two um, freak, you get the freak pen, a red and a black one. If you send in 30, though, you get the notebook, the two pens, and the freak heart stress ball, where you can just, you can almost pretend it's my face, you know? Okay, Redditors? Buy one of these Redditors and pretend it's my face and then squeeze it over and over again like that. Yeah. So thank you to uh, Ashy Snow, Kay Newton, Danielle, Kathy Frydenmaker, Teresa Murray, Callie Gal 3, Danielle again, thank you very much, Ashy Snow, Ghostface Chill, Jessica Schubach, Olivia Dorado, Adnaran, Your Gypsy, Eugenie, Tighten Up. Danielle again, Georgina Stolker, 
Christy, Billy Juliana, Scouting Dude, Danielle, Angela Gallagher, Jen Allison, Cindy J, Justin Pape, Brenda Ivy, Teresa Murray, Simple Life Days, Danielle again. Thanks, Danielle. I mean, there's times where it's sort of slow and then you send uh, your super chat and it's like, oh, somebody was doing something. It was pretty cool. And then Classical Guitarist with a Cat Eye, Ashy Snow with a Cat Eye, and Scout and Dew with a Cat Eye. All three in a row. Amazing. Beth Radish, uh, Mickey Duff, Mary Buchanan, Cadillac with a uh, Cat Eye. Thank you. Snarky Cinderella, Simple Life Days, Eugenie, Plato, Cindy J, Adniram, Zozo, uh, Jim Lon, Lisa Valenzuela, Ramblin' On, D and K Rec, Angela Gallagher, Butter Gaming for Life, new member, Zozo, Adnaran, Jim Lon, Nomad Beads, Nikki Zubs, Nikki Zubs, Diana, Susie, Cadillac, G uh, Gifted Five memberships, and Elaine. You're not the Elaine Talling, are you? From a long time ago. Now the cat eye was just what we it's for uh, 50 somebody sends in a $50 super chat it comes up with you know there's a meaning for every single well not all the super chat things don't have meaning the UFO one is for Linda Molden how uh, the taco really doesn't have any meaning at all it's just kind of cool looking <laughs> uh, cat eye is one that I made and uh, all the emojis have meaning to them. I'm about to go back over that again at some point. All right, so how about tonight we give a, I'll give away tonight I'll give away a notebook and a stress ball that same package in a in a, if, if you win the spin. How about that? All right. So here we go. Here we go. But here's the thing. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I don't. It sucks that I have to do it. But if like if you're living the UK or Australia and you want to buy the notebook and stuff, you have to send in. I think an extra ten or so because here here's what the difference is. Listen to the in the U.S. when I ship anything, even to Hawaii, it was crazy. It's like four dollars and something maximum. But when you send it to Australia, it's nineteen dollars, <laughs> and the UK is nineteen dollars, and so at that point, it's actually a loss of money on the product and everything. I mean, it's so isn't that crazy, you guys? Like nineteen dollars to ship something that weighs less than a pound, not even that, a half a pound over to Australia. Crazy. Yeah, that's what, that's what a super chat is, Ramble on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's and that's actually cheaper than it is at the post office, which is I was kind of surprised using pirate shipping. Uh, well, that's such a great, you know. It still takes me. I just sent off. Well, I haven't sent them off. I have eight ready to ship. They're all done. It's just Sunday. They're sitting over there, so they'll be shipped off tomorrow. Eight packages. But it's a lot easier at home. You know, you just print the labels, print the, you know, the paid label and the address label, and then I have these little Gray Hughes Investigates. Uh, this, these right here. Or, or else. These things. <laughs> you know, they're actually the labels. It has the same picture on it. It goes up in the upper left-hand corner. So, all right. We're going to do the spin. I don't know if you're still here, Zozo, but you're, you're, you, you had better... 
uh, words for the newspaper.com game. So it's kind of right in between your weirdness questions or whatever and the ones you're doing today. It's got to have a little specific, but then... Uh, yeah, I don't know what you're referring to, ramble on. You're just you're kind of rambling on, just like your name. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Yeah, I, I sure hope you don't make a fuss. It's let's see, wheel wheel of names here. Oops. There we go. Yeah, well, it wouldn't even be five ramble on. But cat eyes for 50. Uh, yeah, there's no uh, anything less than, f f uh, I think, three, 99 or 499. It doesn't even have a, an animation. Let's see. We're gonna do the spin now. This is for the notebook. Oh, she's talking about the spin. Yeah, to get into the spin, it's five dollars or more. All right, here we go. Here we go. No, oh, a blank one. All right. <laughs> Woo! There was some spaces in there. Alright, so there's no more spaces now. Here we go. That's okay, Ramble on. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Teresa Murray! Alright! There we go. Sometimes that things are ripping by so fast it's hard to to do it. So it's not really the main purpose of it. I need an apple, you guys. Yeah. I've needed an apple. <laughs> you know. Uh <laughs> So what do you guys want? Uh, anything interesting that you guys want to be covering pretty soon? Or I think at some point, I actually think at some point I might make a the kennel, my own version of the kennel video down there. I spent some time getting a bunch of the reference shots. And that would be cool to do the Arius one. I think the people that don't know the case but when they were watching would go, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for all your donations and support for the channel. Allows me um, uh, to donate a ton of money to various charities. We donate over 50% of the net revenue. And that's because I want to do it. All right. Everybody that donates to uh, me, I can do whatever I felt like doing with it, which is weird. There's people out there that don't seem to get the difference there. It's bizarre. Um, I'm not a charity intake company or anything like that. However, I, because of you guys, you're the ones that support me, that allow me to do it, have donated $138,000 since January 2020. All verified and shown on the screen, and you can even call people up and ask, all right? If you're that psycho, go ahead and do it. Except they'll wonder why you're doing it. But go ahead. Okay. So, anyways, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. And thank you to the mods. 
and we'll see you tomorrow and as i've always said everybody until next time be safe out there and a one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a six and a seven and an eight and a nine and a ten and a eleven and a twelve and a thirteen and a fourteen and during this whole time i have not seen one person that is a what do you mean what does that mean what? Like rejecta. I'm a certified human lie, lie detector. detector. Gonna, gonna get ya on a stretcher. If you try and play me like an old projector, crime sector is my, my nectar. My physics ray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, free connector. Hey, I'm always gonna, gonna be a pop protector. Fool of a flicker, interceptor. Hey, I'm mean a little specter with a vector on his specter. With all respect, y'all. Just remember, I'm a temple fucking jack. I have no agenda. I'm, I'm not a pretender. Can I swear to you, spread with all the blender? Any the ender? I'm gonna, gonna send you on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to. All right, party. everybody. Yay! That was pretty drawn out at the end there. Yeah, I'm just trying something different. All right, you go for it. You go for it. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow, and be safe out there. Yeah, everybody, be safe out there. Be safe out there. Be safe out there. Well, thank you, Timmy, Mary Lou, and John Boy.